hello, hello. What's up this afternoon, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Tuesday to you all. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. What is up, Alex Mateo, Elf? I shower in Farmageddon to ready spaghetti, not a sundew preacher boy, Christonic. Uh, how's everyone doing today? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What's up, Vision Wall Dogs? This set's insane. This set is insane. I, I don't think I'm even being hyperbolic when I say I think this is my favorite set that they have ever made. This set is so spectacular. I'm talking about Horizons too, of course, but. Oh man, oh my god, I don't even know where to start with this set. There's so many decks I gotta build, so many decks that need to be built, so many sweet things to do. Al Rotato, Burning Bush, welcome to the Fishbowl, thank you so much for your subscription. Big tip for you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, that's bonkers, it is absolutely bonkers. The problem with this set <laughs> is that there's so many good things, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start, there's so many decks I need. I gotta build Shaman, I gotta build Upheaval, I gotta build Modular, I gotta build Free Spells, I gotta build the new Free Warped World. There's, uh, and that's, I'm forgetting so many things as I'm going down this list. There's like a million things I gotta build around Insect Planeswalker, there's combos with Imperator Kid, there's Gareth, there's Reanimator, there's Mono Black Devotion Ramp, there's all the Free Spell shenanigans, there's Ragavan Zoo Aggro, there's Mer folk on the menu there's green storm it's ridiculous clues and food and discard in titania land destruction oh huh. I, I i'm just overwhelmed i'm overwhelmed with excitement from this set the illuminati welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super for you thank you thank you Ooh, soul talisman is good in the right day i'm gonna disagree with you i think the soul talisman is bad period Okay, wait, no, that's not true. I think this Soul Talisman is bad in 60 card formats, period. I don't think there's going to be a modern Soul Talisman deck. I do think that there's certain commander decks. Okay, chat, here's the question. And I promise we're going to cube today, too. There will be magic played along with our spoiler discussion. How good, how good is Soul Talisman in Commander? Is this a staple? Is, are you putting this in all your Commander decks? I think, I've been thinking about this all day, all night, trying to figure, oh, I'm, wonder, I'm wonderful, Kithril, how are you? Oh man, I mean, it's an amazing spoiler day. I'm leaning towards it not being good. I think if you're playing like Ozgear, if you're playing Yidris, some sort of Cascade Commander, then I think it's very good. But I don't think you just throw it in any deck. I don't think it's a I don't think it's a new soul ring, and now every deck has two soul rings. I think it's too slow to actually to actually do that. But maybe the most exciting new card. Oh my goodness. This was after I did the spoiler video today. We got one more coming tomorrow. Break the ice. Black, black, sorcery, destroy, target, land, that is snow, or can produce colorless. But still, that's very close to a sinkhole. That's very close to a sinkhole. And then, overload it for six mana, destroy all lands that are snow, or could produce colorless. Oh, it's so sweet. I mean... So I actually feel like I wish it didn't have the the snow or colorless restriction. Sinkhole that turned into six mana Armageddon would be insane. But even as it is, that card is very good. Like, that card, finally, one of my biggest pet peeves from the first Modern Horizons. An awesome set. But one of the things I hated about the set is it made it correct to play snow in every deck. You see a lot of decks that would just... I, I think one of my favorite examples is Hammer Time. Let me see if I can find Hammer Time. Hammer Time, at least last, last I saw, Hammer Time was playing all all snow basics okay it looks like uh, maybe maybe some people have switched back to uh to planes but it was playing all snow covered basics for no reason just for bluff failure that's gonna stop happening plus it hates on tron which is never a bad thing in my book oh this sets this sets amazing this set is amazing on so many levels the other thing i gotta ask you chat because i just did a short about this on the youtube channel and daily spoilers is up on the youtube we got our last we got our last uh, broken free spell. We got the last one. It is it is Fury. Fury, not all that. I mean, it's fine. It's good. It's still the free spell, which is insane. Like, this is a comparison to the other free spells. But I think that Fury is the weakest of the bunch. If it was an instant or had flash, I'd be much more excited. What uh, what is your evoke elemental free spell ranking? What is what is number one? I think my my rating, which you can see on the YouTube channel, I have, and I feel like I need to explain this because shorts only have one minute to discuss. So my rating was Fury 
number five into into solitude into subtlety into endurance into grief at the top that was my ranking although i feel like i need to clarify a little bit uh that i view the three middle ones as very bunched together i think grief is number one i think that red is number five but the three in the middle green white and blue we can have a conversation about what order those should be in. Like, I feel very firmly black number one, red number five, the middle ones, they're all very close. So I think uh, I think we could definitely debate about where those ones rank. Just going from the ICO, I had sepsis. Oh my goodness, still read productions. Uh, hopefully you're doing better. That's super scary. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad you're home now. And, uh... Whew. Uh, I hope uh, I hope you're on the men. So, so yeah, that's a that's a freeze spells. This car, oh my goodness, yes, this set is insane. This set, I, I I'm never at a loss of words for magic, and I am kind of at a loss for words about just how amazing this set is. I think I okay, a little little mini rant and a little mini praise, and then I promise we'll do our reminders and we'll start drafting and we talk about this as we go along. We'll start with we'll start with the praise. We'll start with the good news. The praise is. Duthy Voidwalker is such a sweet card. Hey, what's up, baby? Ga uh, Bailey Gaming, how are you? Who will he buy in paper? I'm probably gonna buy some boxes to open. Duthy Voidwalker is so sweet. I mean, it's an aggressive creature. Two mana, three two, unblockable and can't be blocked. Thanks to Shadow, which is essentially how Shadow plays. You also get a ley line of the void, and then that last ability is so sweet. Can you imagine? Sacrifice it. Choose a card that's exiled with it. You can cast it for free. Can you imagine playing this on turn three and playing? thought sees immediately afterwards and getting an emerkel or a karn or i mean even if you had a just a random decent creature a thought not seer a, a whatever a jace or something it's so absurd it's gonna win the game i think domain zoo is gonna make a comeback so that's my that's my praise my complaint I have been very high on the design of this set, and I think Wizards did an amazing job, and it has many of the sweetest designs we've ever seen. On the other end, Magus of the Bridge, this card just makes me mad. This is my least favorite design from the entire set. So Magus of the Bridge, they're trying to do a Magus of Bridge from Below, which whether or not that's actually a good idea or not, that's up for debate anyway. But the problem is, Bridge from Below it's supposed to be in your graveyard. It works from your graveyard. Magus of the Bridge doesn't do that. It doesn't care about the graveyard at all. It just sits on the battlefield. Uh, and that's not a bad card, but it's it's open the graves. It's open. It's Magus of open the graves, not Magus not not bridge from below like th this is the card it is five mana whenever a non-token creature would die make a 2-2 zombie that's magus of the bridge it sits on the battlefield so uh so yes i i really dislike not the <sighs> i dislike that the card's a magus that's that's what it comes down to i don't feel like this should have been a magus i feel like this is a fine card it's even a cool card for some sort of like sacrifice base deck but i really dislike that they called it magus of the bridge because it just doesn't feel bridge from belowy enough for me but uh but yeah this set this set's insane we can talk about it as we go along but let's do let's do our reminders real quick start doing some cubing and as we go along uh we can talk about modern horizons we can talk about our weekends we can talk about whatever y'all want to talk about it's gonna be a, a fun relaxing afternoon of vintage cube spoiler discussion so uh replay youtube that's where you'd find the old streams normal youtube uh tons of stuff on there daily spoilers go through tomorrow then we're recording the top 10 list for Commander and Legacy and Modern and also a reprint one I'm working on. And then I didn't realize this. I don't know if you realize this, everyone. The set releases on Moto on Thursday. Thursday, two days from now. Like, next time we're streaming, we can play modern horizons draft or something for our thursday stream this set's already coming out so that means we're going to jump right into modern horizon streams and videos and all that stuff even faster than i realized i thought it was going to be like a week but it's happening in two days so that's coming up on the youtube as well a reminder that our sponsor today is card kingdom and uh maybe you need some of those sweet modern horizon cards like a uh, 
Ornithopter of Paradise, for example, a mistied regent. You get them at CarKingdom.com. Even get a free MTG Goldfish sticker. Let them know you want one. They'll hook you up. So thank you to Car Kingdom for supporting the show. And thank you to Debate Bro for the resub. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big super here for you. Otherwise, merch page. Clean out Richard's garage. It's getting closer. Donations always appreciated. Never required. $2 or more. Get your message read on stream. Please keep Legacy in the rotation of your video streaming. I have so much love uh, and fun that I've had in Legacy. Uh, I think that's the plan. I have very much enjoyed playing Legacy. And I have been surprised at how well received it has been. I was really worried that people were going to just not watch, but it seems like people also like watching Legacy. So uh, I don't think it'll be as frequent as it has been the last couple weeks. We're in this weird time for Constructed where Modern's kind of dead as we wait for Modern Horizon. Standard. <laughs> I consider it basically dead until rotation. Maybe the D&D &D set will shake it up, uh, which kind of leaves historic and legacy as the constructed formats. And then also like Pioneer or Pauper is other formats we can play on occasion. But I expect a decent amount of legacy through the summer because... <laughs> I don't really expect to play much Standard until rotation. I'm sure we'll play some around the D&D &D set, but uh, Standard, I think, is out of the rotation for the time being for me. I just don't enjoy it. I'm just not having fun in Standard right now. Not that it's bad or need banning or anything. It's just I, I just don't have fun playing it. Terry the Hunter for this seventh month. Return to the Fishbowl is a place is great. Also, MH2 has managed to absolutely blow my mind with how much raw power the set has. Me too. The set is amazing. The last few weeks has been some of the best goldfish content in recent memory. Well, thank you, Hoobie Fruit. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely appreciate it. So, Standard rotates in September, although, again, I'm not saying we won't play any Standard until September. I will definitely play some with new stuff when D&D set comes out. Some will be scattered in here or there, but I just don't expect us to play, like, a ton of Standard until rotation. And then it'll probably be the be the most, uh, the most, the most played format for a while once we get to rotation. So, I expect, for the near term, lots of Modern with Modern Horizons 2. Uh, some Legacy mixed in, some Historic mixed in, hopefully some Popper and Pop pioneer mixed in and then a little bit of standard mixed in too so is how bad of an idea is it to buy a collector's booster box of modern horizons too i've been wondering that too uh, i'm planning on getting at least one i i know they're expensive but oh, i can't i can't help i can't help it i can't help it the set's so insane hey thank you uh Huduk. all right so what are we doing today magic wise we are playing alt vintage cube so uh you've probably seen us draft vintage cube before this is Vintage Cube with a twist. This is LSV's version of Vintage Cube. LSV, of course, Vintage Cube aficionado, uh, very into into cubing. So this is uh, a version that LSV and Gabby have uh, have built. It shares a lot of similarities with Vintage Cube. It's very high powered, but it's got some different stuff going on. It's got a bit of a twist. It's got like a strip by lands archetype. It's got five color divs. So that's what we're gonna try today. We're gonna try some alt Vintage Cube LSV Vintage Cube. So. Are we ready? Are we ready to jump into draft one? Hopefully we get in two, depending on how long it goes. So, uh, are, are you buying a box? Are you gonna make a Death of Eldraine standard celebration video? I might, I might have to. <laughs> Pour one out for Lovestruck Beast, everyone. <laughs> oh. Draft time? All right, draft time, here we go. We are in. We are joining, we are waiting. Oh, so chat, non-magic question for you. I've talked about this a little bit before, but I've I've been trying to uh, to educate myself in good rap, uh, as far as music. It's probably my least appreciated genre of music over most of my life. So I've been trying to, uh, trying to get more and more into rap. Someone I've been listening to a lot recently, I know this is an older person, but uh, Immortal Technique. I really like Immortal Technique. Who else who else would fit into into that category? Like Immortal Technique, his lyrics are amazing. Like just such a such a great writer. MF Doom. Uh not super so I know most deaf. Run the Jewels, I know a little bit. Kendrick, uh so I know who Kendrick is. Wu Tang, I had a friend that was like very into Wu Tang, so do I like freestyle? So I think what I value most out of rap is is actually the lyrics like meaningful lyrics uh appeal to me just like random you know guns and 
guns and drugs and gangster rap stuff. That's not especially appealing to me. All right, what do we, what do we got in this pack? How do we make the cards bigger? We always have this. We always have this challenge of how to make the cards bigger. Uh, all right, so what are we what are we taking? What are we taking? We, oh, Childish Gambino, no, I like a lot. All right, pack one, pick one. Ugin is hanging out. I mean, Ugin's not bad. Uh, Impero Recruiter supports some combos. Underworld Breach can do ridiculous things. Can never go wrong with Fast Mana. Fast Mana's always good. Although Mox Simon is, I think, a lower tier Mox. Although there is a Land from the Graveyard archetype in this cube. Probe is always fine. Metal Worker's really good, but you need to be in a specific deck. Uh, risky to first pick, I would say. Are we just taking Mox Diamond? It's hard to go wrong with Mox Diamond. Uh... So uh, I like of Montreal. Yeah, we'll just take Mox Diamond. I like of Montreal. Uh, Vampire Weekend. Vampire Weekend. I do not understand. I feel so. Did Vampire Weekend like Weezer? Weezer it. The Jolly Flagman. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. All right. So so <laughs> Vampire Weekend. They made an amazing album. Their first album is like amazing. Their second album is pretty good. And then I listened. I I pulled up. I was like, I haven't listened to them for a while. So I pulled up Spotify, and their most recent album was like twenty minute songs of like noise like jam jam band noise stuff and i was like i just i didn't get it i didn't get it they went from being like super awesome to being i don't i think they weezered it i think they might have weezered it um relic's good girl yeah i guess we should stop talking about weezer and start drafting uh liliana probably not Chromox, man. Chromox would be... We could go very aggressive and just try to do broken things with all the Moxid. Coalition Relic is safer. Yeah, we'll take Coalition Relic. Oh, my... Oh, I, do people not value Library of Alexandria anymore? Why do people not play Library of Alexandria? It doesn't work that way, well with uh, Mox... That's... I mean, Library's busted. I don't get it. I don't... All right, weigh in on this, Jet. Is... Is Library still busted? I don't understand why people don't pick library highly anymore. I also do love building opposition decks. Opposition is a really fun card to build. LSV hates library. Ugh, LSV. LSV. I thought LSV appreciated a good uh, a good card draw, a good dirtle, but perhaps I was wrong. I think it's I mean library is the probably the easy pick, but Opposition would be interesting. Oh, I, I can't. I have a rule about not passing library, so we're going to take the library. I, I never pass library. <laughs> I think library is insane. I still always take it. I We might regret passing, wow, Brainstorm and Ponder. Hmm. I mean, one mana cantrips are always good. I don't know where this deck is heading. We have library, we have two two mana rocks. Like what else are we gonna take? I don't think we need Vanifar. Oath of Nissa? It's probably just a ponder or brainstorm. I think I would take ponder over brainstorm without having fetch lands, but Eh, let's take ponder. It is old bordered. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. 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 I do like Aminatu's Augury if you can cast it. <laughs> There's also Impulse, which is... A, maybe we just take all the cheap cantrips and we figure it out later. <laughs> We're not taking Everclave. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Hey, see you ready. Thanks for stopping by. So... Ugh, ravages. We just drafted Library, though. I want Library to stay on the battlefield and draw some... You know what? Let's take Impulse. We'll figure out where this is going in pack two. Ooh, could we be a wildfire deck? We have two artifact sources of mana so far. We have ways to find it. I mean, if you can wrap into wildfire, it can get people. Kes is cool. Do we want to be a control deck? I feel like if we take Kes, then we're going to end up being a, a crim deck, essentially. Or do we want to do we want to not be a crim deck? 
end of the triome is doesn't add blue, but it's fine. You know, let's let's try to build a wildfire deck. Ooh, ooh. Well, I mean, this is just a strong card if you can ramp into it. Probably take. Maybe we're like blue green wildfire. I don't really want to be a crib deck. I don't think. I mean, the triome is this is a good triome. Is there any chance that we get back opposition? If we are gonna get back opposition, then young pyromancer would be sweet. Wall of Roots is also good. Portal's solid. It does draw a card every turn, pretty much. You think Portal's better than Epiphany? Really? Well, I mean, we do have a lot of artifact synergies. Wow, blue is shockingly open at the moment. Ooh, squirrel. The best squirrel. Uh, huh. Ha, 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 ha. LED, you need very specific things to make it work, and we do not have those things. I like Seagate Restoration. Shark Typhoon's also fine. Shark Typhoon over Seagate Restoration? Uh, we took Cohesive Portal with the last the last one. Everyone wants a shark. All right, all right, all right. Sure. Ooh. Ooh, Metal Worker came back. Okay. I don't know what's going on in this draft, but apparently being a, a Is It Artifact deck is not a horrible place to be. We do, I mean, we have a start that could support a metal worker, especially if we, and Shark Typhoon's good with it. It works well with Wildfire cards. All right, let's uh, metal work it. We are not a metal worker deck. Not yet a metal worker deck. <laughs> give it time, give it time. Ooh, wait, we might be a Brain Freeze deck. Brain Freeze, I, I actually believe that Brain Freeze is a decent finisher. Like, even if you're not built around it, just picture, like, Mox, Ponder, Brain Freeze, Snapcaster, Brain Freeze. That's lethal. We're taking Brain Freeze. Oh, my. Oh, sweet mother. Oh, that's the happiest I've ever been. Okay. We got the opposition back, too. Well, okay, so we have tons of we have tons of possibilities now. We got tons of possibilities. We have wildfire. We have opposition. We have Brain Freeze. We have Metal Worker. We have we have a little bit of everything. We have a we have a little bit of everything. Uh yeah, we'll take the Sahili. We are in the right colors for Sahili. We'll take Ravages, put it in the sun. Well, let's put it in the main for now. All Sun's Dawn, Rift Bowl. Okay. So we're gonna have to narrow this down. We're gonna have to narrow this down where we're going. We have a couple different plans. We gotta hone in on one. We either need a bunch of creatures for opposition. We need a well, I guess we're taking Soul Ring. Uh, we need... So, okay. This is where we're at. This is where we're at. This is where we're at. So, Opposition wants us to have creatures. Wildfire wants us to have Mana Rocks. Metal Worker wants us to have Artifacts, which is also Mana Rocks. There's combos for Sahili. We're probably not Ravaging, but we could bring it in. Uh, and then Brain Freeze, we'll see where, where it ends up. Um, I mean, I don't think we can not take Soul Ring. Uh, Soul Ring is just like, it's probably the most powerful card in the cube, and it's an artifact, and it works with Wildfire, and it works with Metal Worker, and it works with Shark Typhoon. Like, how can we, how can we not take it? How can we not take it? <laughs> uh, Narset's also good. I don't mind Riffling, Cloudscape. We definitely want to keep an eye out for things that put multiple creatures on the board. I think blue-green is the best opposition colors usually, but Fast Bond has sweet combo potential. Oh my god, there's a single second right in the cube. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think we can take second, right? We're definitely taking Soul Ring, but it's cool that it's in the cube. Ooh. 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 Okay. Okay. Things are getting challenging. Well, now... Now we have a couple... We have a couple of interesting options. I mean, this is good, but I don't think we're, we're taking Nissa here. Uh... We're, we're not really in green at the moment. We could be in green, but hey, what's up, Monster CC? So the cards that stick out to me here are Karn to become a Dirty Tron player or Deceiver Exarch just on spec because we are in the right colors for the for the combo. Vamp, I mean, Vamp would be fine on the splash. Kenrith is a is a very powerful card. Inferno Titan is actually like a pretty legit finisher. We do have a decent amount of ramp, but 
Karn? I mean, the other thing is Deceiver Exarch is probably going to table. Unless someone else has built... Channel? That is a channel. Hmm. Huh. I was not expecting channel. <laughs> we, can, we can make the biggest shark ever. <sighs> so do we take Kiki and get the Deceiver Exarch on the wheel? The only thing with channel is it is double green, and our mana base is not built to support it. Do we need to be red? I mean, technically, I guess it depends on if we're wildfire. We don't need to be. We could be blue-green. So we either take Kiki and hope to wheel a combo piece. We take Muldrifter because Muldrifter is awesome. I guess Kiki kind of works with opposition if we can get, like, a, a Siege Gang commander or something that makes tokens. You don't think Deceiver Exar is going to wheel? I'm going to take Kiki. I'm going to take it. I might regret it, but I'm going to take it for now. Our opposition is not looking great. I do like Thieving Skydiver. Tally's Minute Creativity is also good. Huh. That might be better. We're a little we're a little all over the place. We're a little all over the place at the moment. XR should wheel. Mind's Desire could wheel too. We could maybe Mind's Desire. Mind's Desire into the combo. So Talisman is good with metal. We're a little, still a little scattered. Good with metal worker, wildfire, Karn, I guess. Skydiver, I really like. That works more with opposition. Maybe we're just not an opposition deck at this point. I think we got to take Talisman, based on based on the rest of what's going on in our deck. Well. This is probably pretty easy dual land. Turnabout, we're not Storm. We might brain freeze a little bit, but we're not We're not Storm. How are you supposed to say Talisman? Do I say that wrong? Ta Talesman. Tail I used to say Talesman and get yelled at. Could ramp into Ulamog, but yeah, we just need, we need the mana fixing. We have not drafted many lands yet. Ooh, Skull Clamp A. We actually got a couple of really good splash lands. We're probably taking another duel. Ooh, actually no, P and Karen. P and Karen is the kind of card that makes opposition work. Are we still trying to play tail tall less man? Tailless man. Towel is man. Towel, it can't be towel is <laughs> Towel is man. <laughs> uh, uh This is where we either gotta we either gotta support the opposition or we gotta move it to the sideboard and give up on on it. Towel is man. Alright, we'll go we'll go with it for now. Ooh, so we Oh Time Warp's fine. Time Warp's good with planeswalkers. Could also just take Everflow. How many ramp spells do we have? We have Mox, Soul Ring, Coalition Relic. Hmm. I almost think we just take Chalice still to up our artifact count. Like, Metal Worker needs to have a lot of artifacts for it to work. Would you like to see... Would you like to see Rough Drafts 3... Ooh, Blightsteel. Hmm. Hornet Queens, pretty bomby with opposition, but... 12 manas. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> That's ambitious. I mean, we could get a tinker, too. All right, we'll take it. We'll take it. We'll see. Oh, oh, Bullis is Citadel. This does not seem like a second right deck. Tolarian Academy would be sweet. Oh, Tinker would be amazing. I was wondering what your thoughts are on Flame Bliss. The uncommon deals five damage to Planeswalker on end step. I, uh, myself, I find it powerful. I feel like... I mean, Lutri's fine. All right, we'll take Lutri. Almost tempted to just... Ooh, all right, so we get back Inferno Titan. That's fine. Ooh, smokestack. <laughs> Maybe we're not an opposition deck. Maybe we're a smokestack deck. Huh. Huh. 
So we can play it on turn two off of Soul Ring. Yeah. I won't complain about a, a good smokestack. Uh, let's take... Well, I could imagine splashing Soulfire Grandmaster. I don't think we're playing the other cards. We'll take Turnabout. Apparently no one's storming. Take the duel. Wither Blue. All right, all right. Well, give us Tinker Teleriot Academy. So I think that the that it's a good sideboard card. Oh! That's Teleriot. Oh, no! That's both. Mmm. Should have told the Magic Gods to split them up. Ugh. Gosh darn it. Huh. Well, that's a that's a pickle. <laughs> JMS. <laughs> Welcome to the fishbowl. I mean, we got the two best cards for our deck. Tinker, Teleriot Academy. Those are the exact two. Out of the entire cube, those are the two cards that we wanted to open. Um, It would have been better if they were split out by a pack, but... uh. <laughs> We can't get played. JMS, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big you beautiful for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I do think that you are correct that Academy is more likely to wield than Tinker. You do need a lot of artifacts to make Academy work. Uh, otherwise, Snapcaster, I might consider. Mana Flare is a bit, a bit on the risky side. We'll take Tinker. We'll take Tinker. <sighs> Mind Twist. That's a card that's worth splashing. Mind Twist is worth splashing. We do have a Badlands. If we get a single fetch land, we can make it work. Lodestone Golem should wheel. Watery Grave could also wheel. Thirst for Knowledge, I would also play just for card draw, but... Copter, I don't know if we have enough creatures to crew consistently. I feel like we should take Mind Twist. We already have a Badlands, so we're not that far away from making it work. And we have a lot of ramp. It is the highest upside card. Like, Mind Twist, turn one, like, land Soul Ring into Mind Twist on turn two, pretty much wins the game. We're gonna, we're gonna take it. Try to find a fetch land at some point. One thing we don't have is much removal. I guess, I guess we have player removal. <laughs> Yeah, Mox Diamond helps, I guess, and so does Coalition Relic. Oh, this pack's not exciting. I guess Spire Bluff? Yeah, I don't know if I want to take more black cards. I don't think we're going to be that splashy. Bolt. Yeah. Kind of medium removal. I feel like the creatures that show up are big, but we do want a removal spell to, like, kill whatever. A collector oof or something. I think it's probably just Spire Bluff. Make our mana better. Ooh, we have a new donation from... What do we get from this? Aw, oh, it's a fetch land, but it doesn't get... It doesn't get bad lands. We have a new donation from... All right, chat, I'm going to read this donation. Figure out our pick. Oh, it's probably Emery, isn't it? From... Wow, $20 donation from Dan Wildfire. How was your weekend, Seth? My weekend was... Uh, it was not bad. It was It was super busy. Uh, doing uh, doing spoilers and stuff still. And then got to do some family stuff. But it was uh, it was nice. It was a, it was a nice weekend. Tusk, uh, too hot to... Toski, <laughs> welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Misty does get watery. Emery's also... Well, I'm going to take Emery. This feels like an Emery deck to me. Ugh. Hmm? Mizzix Mastery. What can we do with a Mizzix Mastery? So I'm kind of thinking we're just not playing Opposition. And probably not playing Kiki. You, whoever said we were not going to get back Deceiver Exarch was correct. So this can flashback Wildfire? Eh. That's not that exciting. Commit to Memory is fine. Sphinx is a good uh, tinker target in certain matchups. If you run into like Mono Red, Sphinx is the best tinker target. Eh. This is also interaction, though. I think we gotta take commit. We gotta have a little bit of interaction. A little. A little. 
Oh, that's another black source we could have got with the Misty. Bonus, <laughs> bonus round. Fiery Confluence. Vasa's Oracle? I don't think we can win with Vasa's Oracle, but... Hmm. <clears throat> Busa Mezen, how was your uh, how was your weekend, Doug? Busa Mezen, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big stupid cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, towel is man. Uh, could be good. Do we do we want the black towel is man? <sighs> Maybe. This pack's not great for us. Eh, we'll, we'll we'll take it. I don't. It is an artifact. I don't know if we'll play it. Negate's probably at least a good sideboard card. Ooh, Acidic Estrada with a bunch of gift subs. Going out to the Grade, the Great Merchant, Eagle, Stone Rain Productions, and Haven Bro. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big stupid for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I don't know if we'll play Towels Man in the main deck, but maybe. Negate. Maze. Yeah, I think I'd rather have Negate. Oh! Oh, oh, workshop, workshop. If we get workshop, oh, that's a good sign for Clarion Academy coming back. So this can cast Smokestack on turn two. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Could also just take Warren Power Stone. Creeping Tar Pit would also help with our Splash. Do we have enough big artifacts? One, two, three. Oh, we're going to let it go. We're going to let it go. Oh! It didn't come back. Oh! Someone took Academy, but not Factory. Or Workshop. Huh. Kinda just want porcelain legionnaire, I think. <laughs> just to just to put a body on the battlefield. I think the Kiki combo train is well, we got a bunch of black mana. Which is good. Oh wait, no. Lodestone Golem. Uh I think the Kiki combo train is sailed at this point. I think we're I think we're off that plan. Uh Necromancy could be sideboarded in. Uh, Collector Brutality could be sideboarded in. Mizzix's Mastery could be sideboarded. We got a new donation from Lucid. Boy, so much Storm stuff. Day Blake. Three dollar donation. Hey Seth, where are my Demir rares in MH2? Why does Wizards hate Grixis control? Lucid, they gave you they gave you a Planeswalker. They gave you your own Grixisy Grixisy Planeswalker. <laughs> Did Demir did Demir really get the the short end of the the short end of the stick? Oh wait, we got a new rare that I haven't seen yet. Ketten FDW, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big tube for you. Six six mana. Nykthos exemplar. Six mana. Four six enchantment creature soldier. When you gain life, you may put that many plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. You may do this only once. You soul sisters. Soul Sisters. <laughs> that seems like it should be good in Soul Sisters. <laughs> uh, actually, it's way too expensive for Soul Sisters. Um, maybe, probably Life Gain Commander decks. This does not feel like a card that is geared towards Commander. Uh, yeah, Soul Sisters cannot really cannot really play six drops. That's just asking a bit a bit too much. Hmm. Is our deck good? I'm not sure. So 31, move these lands out here. Uh, so we gotta cut like two to three cards. All right, what are what are we cutting? What are we cutting? What are we cutting? Yeah, it seems geared towards uh, a commander deck. Six mana soul sisters is, is a little steep, little steep. So artifacts need to stay in if possible. Artifact, 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 artifact. Oh, I guess Lutri starts in our sideboard. So artifact, 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 artifact. Tinker stays with the artifacts. We keep our cantrips. I guess Sahili doesn't do anything. I mean, Sahili we can we can sacrifice. <laughs> it can copy a P in Karen Probably cut Sahili, I guess. 
Does this deck have a chance to win? Uh, any deck has a chance to win if you if you dream hard enough. <laughs> I mean, the deck the deck does have a plan that can win. I mean, Tinker, Mind Twist, Ramp into Karn, those are all ways that we can win. I guess there's a question as to whether we're actually wildfiring. Maybe we just cut the wildfire. Yeah, Emery, Emery's got to stay. Brain Freeze could go. Cantrips are going to stay. I think Negate should stay. Shark Typhoon's a finisher. Karn's a finisher. Inferno Titan's fine. Mind Twist, free wins. Little bit of interaction. So I think it comes down to... I think it comes down to these two cards. Brain Freeze or Wildfire? 15 lands. Wait, 15 lands? 15 lands seems seems low to me P and Karen out I kind of like P and Karen to keep our smokestack going cut wildfire is there anything in our sideboard that we want so fireball could come in in certain matchups collective brutality necromancy Unfortunately, we can't opposition, really. Kiki doesn't do anything. Mizzix Mastery, I don't think does anything. I feel like this deck could win with Brain Freeze. I feel like there are ways that we can win with Brain Freeze. I guess there's also ways we can win with Wildfire. What are we tutoring up with Wishclaw, though? We don't really have a tutor this up and win the game 16 lands I'm kind of worried about cutting lands like does this actually feel like a 16 land deck really that feels great we don't have any real mox in our mox requires us to discard a land Yeah, all right, all right. Maybe, maybe we just try sixteen. Try sixteen and run it like this. Ooh, a little nervous, a little nervous, but but we can try it. What would it look like with sixteen? We're not playing a swamp or a plains. Probably, <clears throat> probably something like this: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight red sources. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. 16 feels risky to me. I guess we don't we do have a couple of cheap cantrips. If this was a real mox, I would be more excited about I mean library does make mana, so it is it is actually a land. If this was a real mox, I would be less worried. Yeah, library's busted. It it actually does. Oh, wait, there's a bad a bad tribal flames? Why would we want a bad Tribal Flames when we have a real Tribal Flames? Kaleida Scorch. Two mana. Converge. Deals X damage to any target where X is the number of colors mana spent to cast it. Flashback for five. Oh. So you get a five mana Tribal Flames or a shock for two mana? I guess it's probably fine and limited. I don't think that's going to see play in Modern. Uh, yeah, we gotta splash a little bit of black for this Mind Twist. Mind Twist is just too good to pass up. I mean, we also have this Lodestone. Alright, we'll try it, we'll try it with 16. We'll try it. What's the, what's the worst that could happen? Oketra's Mercy or Resolute Angel with Nykthos Exemplar, good or bad? Um, I mean, huh, probably bad probably bad i think it depends on your deck so what i would be worried about what i would be worried about with playing something like resolute archangel or catcher's last mercy is i assume that you're playing a life gain deck so if you're playing a life gain deck is this actually going to be gaining you life because if you're at or above your uh, your starting life total, so I think you'd have to build around it where you were like intentionally trying to intentionally trying to lose life. Then maybe it could work. 
I was just thinking about this interaction. How does Doothy Voidwalker interact with Tybalt Cosmic Imposter's emblem? Ooh. Oh dear. That might be above my head. Um wait, let me let me read Tybalt. Let's let's read Tybalt real quick. Tybalt says, uh Exile, Exile. Oh, it doesn't. I don't think they would interact at all, right? Because Tybalt just exiles stuff directly, so nothing's going in the graveyard. If Tybalt, like, destroyed things, then it would be awkward, but I don't think it actually does anything. Boom. Loots. Loots Magoots. Oh, okay. Well... We're gonna keep this. <laughs> we need uh we need untap land. If we get on oh no, we don't need an untap land. Soul ring. Oh, this sounds insane. Soul ring. Talisman. And uh go. Well, this looks like a, a lodestone on turn two. Arbor Elf for our opponent. Oh. Or else maybe we just win the game. I guess we go with win the game mode. Eh, all right. Yeah, sure. Um, get a blight steel. Play that. All right, opponent. <laughs> Your go, friend. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. well, <laughs> nice, nice try, Arvor Elf. <laughs> oh, I forgot that. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I forgot uh, how powerful Tigger could be. Tigger's just so busted. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, that was that was good. That was good. Off to a good start. Well, Pona's playing Elves, apparently. I think we'll bring in Firebolt. Uh, we will go down Porcelain Legionnaire. Wildfire is actually probably insane. Maybe we go down the Negate? Is that too greedy? Negate for Brutality? I mean, or we can just do that again. Maybe we just do that again. That's a... <laughs> that would also be fine. <laughs> Tinker's got to be on the short list of most broken cards ever made. Well, all right. This game, little punish for our 16 land technique. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, this will keep. This hand's not good, but we'll keep it. No ramp. This is much less explosive. No ramp this time. No Tinker's. All right, opponent, don't run us over, please. Brutality's actually good. Land, go. Oh, Tinker would, Tinker would break modern. I think Tinker would definitely, definitely break modern. Well, pass the turn. So opponent's like creature ramp, I guess. There's a Arbor Elf. And, okay, opponent's all, oh, all about that creature ramp. Opponent's passing. Well, one, two, impulse. Take. Ha. Huh. Mm. Max Diamond? How does Opalescence interact with Out of Time? Ooh. Um... Would you exile everything permanently? Maybe? Because you're going to play out of time. It's going to exile itself, right? Because it is going to be a, a creature. Or, but no, Opal Essence will get exiled too. Yeah, I think you would just wrath the board, I think. This is a scary spot to be. All right. Well, untap. Play the land. Collective brutality. Two modes. K. 
kill you, dress you. Discard smokestack. Oh dear. Oh no. Toski. Toski coming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I wish we had our collective brutality. That would be very good against Toski. Well, we know what our opponent's trying to do now. Untaps. Toskis. We draw land. Second from the top. So opponent missed their land drop. I guess we just do it now. All right, get rid of Toski for now. Pass the turn. We can't let him draw cards. That would be that would be really bad. Oath of Nissa. We need Wildfire. Wildfire would just straight up win us the game, I think. Opponent. Oh! That's why you put Mind Twist in your deck. That is why. One, two, three, four. Mind Twist. All right. Toski may no longer be a problem. Out of here? Out. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> well, Hull Breacher. Wild fire, wild fire. This does mean our cohesive portal is not going to do anything. Oh, I hate Hull Breacher so much. Um, hmm. I hate all Reacher. Are we playing against Crim? We gotta be playing against Crim. Whew. Well, play library. Uh, what do we do about this? What do we do? No, 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 no. I, I do not believe we're gonna cast memory from our graveyard. <laughs> Hall Reacher doesn't care. Other than your draw step, it is going to stop you and make a treasure. Yeah, we're not even going to play Portal. Like, it's just going to give our opponent treasures. Well, I assume our opponent is not going to vote blow it up mode. Opponent. Well, again, we got to be aware of, of Hull Breacher. Harmonize and a land. Wildfire. Wildfire's a card. Wildfire's a card. Opponent, more mana dorks. Well, that's also a card. Uh, Inferno Titan. You, you, you. Okay, okay, that also works. Whoo! That was. We don't have the second black for oh, opponent. Opponent. <laughs> Ah, scoops it up. Tried to jake us out with the whole reacher. No, no, no. <laughs> that was a, that was a good draw. That was a very good draw. Well, we overcame. We overcame a whole reacher. <laughs> that went pretty well. Red hot chili stump. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here for you. I am ridiculously excited for MH2 decks. I can't figure out what to build first. Like, uh, here's a. I got another question for you, Jet. What do you think about? like brewing streams would you uh would you be interested in in a brewing stream in regards to vampire weekend this last album was missing the producer of the duo since he left to do his own thing the lead singer was made most of the lyrics but the producer was the one who made the amazing tunes in the first two albums ah oh, that makes that makes sense like would that be would that be something that would be fun like not any gameplay essentially like Rather than actually playing games, we kind of like fire up and and build some build some decks from MH2 or whatever. Now, pro well, I mean, we could do EDH. Tomer does EDH. I was thinking more like, I was thinking more like uh, modern for Modern Horizon stuff. 
It could be kind of fun. That's something we haven't done before. Maybe, maybe we'll try to do a brewing stream. Maybe with a couple of test games, it could be fun. So the hard part is getting the cards. Like, that's the challenge. I think test games would be sweet. But the problem is I don't have all the cards, and I don't know what the decks are, so I can't get them ahead of time. So that's that would be the, the challenging part. If we waited until after like the loan programs were working, that would be a possibility, because then we could just borrow the cards really quick. Did Pauper get any decent cards from Mage 2? Pauper, uh, I think, is, is going to break. <laughs> I think it is going to break. Um... Because, I mean, they got a ton of cards, actually. But the one that's going to break it is uh, is this one right here. I am surprised they have not banned this card yet. Chatterstorm. One in a green. Sorcery. Make a 1-1 one, one Storm. Storm at common. It's going to it's gonna break Popper. It's going to... Uh, it's it's going to break Popper almost 100%. Yeah, could Brudex one stream and then test them on another? That would be... That would be another uh, another easy possibility. Well, we're not keeping that. Hmm. Library's a little worse on the mulligan. And we're on the play. Oh, well, all right. Not the biggest fan of where we're at. If we could start drawing with library, I'd be happy, but... Neo Yasu, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, slow. Gonna need two turns to draw with library. That is not ideal. Well, at least our opponent's playing Fabled Passage, so. Island. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna... We are going to wait <laughs> and draw a card. <laughs> Soaring doesn't do anything at the moment. More colorless mana. Uh, Modern Horizons 2 does not go into Pioneer. Modern Legacy Commander, Pauper. But uh, not Pioneer, not Historic. It should be coming to Arena, but it is not. That's a blowout. Oh, that's a blowout. Autumn Shake, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, we are in a in a really 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 bad spot what do you think of this build of modern madness Ooh, let me see cag bro opponent takes our ponder we will pass the turn hope our opponent does not have more discard modern madness eh blazing law seems like a sweet addition the question is how do you discard stuff that's that's the that is the the issue so what i'm kind of looking for is repeatable discard outlets underworld cookbook's not bad but i'm skeptical of stuff like blood rage brawler and stuff like fury blade vampire i guess fury blade is okay but uh like blood rage brawler you need to be able to cast it for two mana then you need to have mana left over to be able to cast your your stuff that has madness so to make that work you need like five mana which is just a ton so that's something i'd be looking for would be more more free discard outlets but uh but yeah i think i like the i like the idea of where it's heading oh my god who in the chat said play 16 lands? Who? Who, who, who? Uh, yeah, we're... This is... I think this is just over. Like, I think we just get janked out by Thief of Sanity now. We don't have an answer to it. Soul Ring, I guess we... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we need to draw the card more than we need this talisman here. Uh, we need to... We need to draw and hit more lands. Opponent gets in. I mean, the big problem is we just lose to Thief of Sanity. We're sticking around to see more of our opponent's deck, but we just got off to a really slow start, and uh, Thief of Sanity snowballs insanely if you can't kill it. Well, Wildfire is probably going to be in our graveyard or exiled momentarily. 
That is the power of Thief of Sanity. Plus, our opponent's a blue deck, so counters. King of Diamonds, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Opponent. Lingering Souls. How do we do this? How can we do this? So FIFA Sanity. I mean, the long-term payoff is the wildfire. If we draw a card... One, two... We're going to get hit by this again? Alright, let's draw... Play Talisman. Play Badlands. Yo. Well, I didn't hold off on Talisman to draw a card. I held off on Talisman to draw five, ten cards, uh, something like that. <laughs> like. Wow. All right. Getting janked out, I guess. Uh. I mean, the, the power of library is is that you can keep it going turn after turn after turn. That is that is the upside. Hmm. Well, this is kind of annoying. Oh, opponent's going to hit us. Mill a bunch of our cards. This wildfire should be decent. Opponent passes. Ooh, and mind twist. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. Wildfire. I mean, we come out of this exchange pretty good. Pony goes down to one land. We're going to have four mana. So maybe maybe that's just good enough. Hopefully, we our opponent did mill a lot of our lands. And they do have two of our cards exiled that they can cast. Wait, what are, what are we getting punted for now? About it. Passes. Well, we will pass the turn. Yeah, Wildfire is really powerful. Wait, I'm so confused. Oh, negating this? Eh, the sword doesn't do anything if we're wildfiring, though, does it? Eh, well, that's probably worth negating, I guess. Unfortunately. Alright, there's a land, which is nice. I mean, we're not that far away from Karn. Opponent's got three cards. Well, play the land past the turn. We can also commit at some point and shuffle our deck back in, which is pretty sweet. I'm just worried about our opponent having our... Ooh, opponent's another land. I'm just worried about what our opponent's taken from our deck. Thirst for knowledge. Sure. Well, I mean, I think we're just trying to set up this mind twist. Oh, about it. Passing. Well, impulse. Actually, smokestack's interesting. Hmm. I mean, I guess it's going to be eating away our stuff, too. Could take the land or the coalition relic. One, two, one, two, three, one, two. The only downside is it means we don't get to leave up our commit to memory unless we draw land. All right, we'll take it. I mean, I guess it's better if we hit it, uh, if we get to our smokestack eventually anyway. Cohesive portal. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess we're going shields down. Coalition relic. Alright, shields down. Poison Legionnaire, please nothing scary. Your go. Did you adjust for stream mode? Oh, I don't think we did. Good uh good call. There we go. Street Sedgemore Witch. Alright. Well, opponent passes. We draw Blight Steel. Oh, we forgot to uh forgot to tap that. Uh, I think that's fine. One, two, three, four, five. Alright, so step one. Wipe our opponent's hand. Oh, recurring nightmare. Him to Turak Gonti. Okay. All right. Well, pass the turn. We cannot get hit by this order. We lose. About it. Planes. Ever-flowing chalice. From our deck, of course. Equips the sword. Now well, we got a block. Yeah, this is this is awkward. Oh, we lose. It is menace. Okay, that's a punt. Well, yeah, I mean I guess I guess that's a punt. Wow, that was that was annoying. I never remember that that thing has menace. <laughs> I don't know why it has menace. Just uh, some random words thrown on for no real reason. <laughs> but indeed it does. Uh, all right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, random menace. I mean, once every few thousand games, menace actually matters. <laughs> oh, what a what a silly what a silly silly mechanic. What is the what is the reason to have Well, I mean the only I guess the point that might have impacted the game was uh was not remembering Menace on Sedgemore Witch. I don't think anything else actually had an impact on the game. But why why would that card have menace? I'm actually kind of confused. Is it one of those cases where it's like we got a little space left on the card, so we gotta fill it with a word? <laughs> that does seem to be that does seem to be the current the current design technique, I would say. Yeah, let's go down brain freeze and Yeah, I guess we can go down Legionnaire. Alright, run it like that. I mean, aren't there a lot of a lot of goths? Well, we'll reveal Lutri. Well, all right, we got some ramp and an impulse. I feel like I feel like not not keeping library going is a mistake. I feel like considering considering that a punt is. I think that's questionable to me. Because I this is something I noticed when I we were tweeting and talking about library on, on Twitter is a lot of people are like, oh, that's I mean, that card's horrible. Like seven cards in hand. Uh but if you actually play to keep library on, it's absolutely busted. So I think it's a little bit more complicated than just Oh, it's a punt when we have the when we have the wildfire in hand. Like, we have the wildfire in hand to put our opponent to one land. Opponent's good at finding that dress. Alright. Well, library will be there eventually. Hopefully. 
opponent, going to take our brutality, gonna be a few turds. What do you think of this list? Let me see, thingam. I don't library, go. Scales is back. I mean, Hardened Scales definitely getting some, uh, some nice updates from Modern Horizons. Well, play the land, run out a Lodestone Golem. Go. All right, we need uh we need uh, some payoffs. We need some payoffs. Oh, opponent, shouldn't have kept that one. That's a payoff. Um, oh, maybe we just empty our hand here. Let's go to combat. Attack it for five. Yeah, I think the scales deck looks sweet. Zabaz seems like a a pretty big addition. Oh no, we can't talisman because of lodestone. All right, so play the land. Run out P and Carindalar. Go. Opponent. Passing. Dying. Why did our opponent keep this hand? <laughs> opponent. Down to six. You know what? I don't even think we play anything. Pass the turn. I mean, I, I don't even know what the point is. <laughs> They just kept it because they could duress. And opponent, well, <laughs> that was a nice little free win. Which MH2 packs offer the best chance of non-foil retro cards? Oh, I wish I had a good answer for you. So, my understanding, and don't quote me on this because for some reason Wizards has decided to make booster packs the most complicated thing outside of, I don't know. Uh, chaos theory or something but uh but okay so my understanding is that the mh1 reprints only come in foil so mh1 reprints are only in collector's boosters they are only in foil the normal old border cards that are not reprints come in all styles foil and non-foil and those show up in i believe all versions of packs I don't know what Wizards was thinking, printing them only in foil. That is such a crazy thing to me. Like, have they not heard the feedback from players from the past, from the past like tons of years about how bad the quality of foils are? It's really hilarious because they're printing cards that people really want. Like, people want Sword of Sinew and Steel, Old Border, it looks amazing. But why are they doing it only in foil? Two different foils that are even more even even more complicated. Like, just the amount of printings of each card is ridiculous. And the other thing is, like, who knows what etch foil even means? <laughs> etch foil means something different every set. So I guess we kinda got a bit of a look uh, on on Twitter, but <laughs> uh yeah, Aaron Aaron Forsyth has been very active with this set for some reason. This is the I think the most active I have seen Aaron being. All right, we'll keep this. Not super explosive, but it's fine. But yeah, I've, Aaron has been like very active on social media. That's actually a pretty sweet draw. Well, get down the mox. Discard a island. Go. About it untaps. Oh, that that makes sense. Aaron was lead design, I see. Ooh. Metalworker, eh? So pleased! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh. Kill Jace. I kind of want to kill Jace Duress. Kill Jace Duress, discard Metalworker. I kind of feel like that's our best option. I feel like we got to discard something. It's probably got to be Metal Worker. Yeah, all right. Well, play the island. Yeah, this should be a decent brutality. Two modes. Duress you, kill your Jays. Discard Metal Worker. Whew. Yeah, we don't really need it here. Oh, boy. Uh, 
Alright, well. If our opponent draws a land here, we're gonna be sad. Opponent kept two lands all the action. Justina! Welcome to the... Oh, come on! Oh! Wow! Oh, they went with Rager. Okay. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better. Oh, no. This is complicated. I thought they were gonna steal our Mox Diamond for sure. If they stole our Mox Diamond, I think we just lose. <laughs> Uh, all right, mountain. Wow, this hand is, our opponent's hand is stacked with small, annoying creatures. Yeah, I can't believe they're, <laughs> I can't believe they played Phyrexian Ranger. Yeah, that, that kind of saved us. So we can portal and start drawing cards. So we gotta assume that we're gonna lose our. We're gonna lose something to Velky. Hmm. I guess I can eventually steal it with Skydiver. It's a lot of mana though. Oh, all right, can we use a portal? Go. Yep. Hey, what's up, Roblox wife? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, uh, boot it. Found the land. Runs out a Velky. Well, I think we we want to find like Tinker or Wildfire. Those are the cards. Those are the cards that can win us the game. We do get to start drawing an extra card each turn, which is pretty nice. Lingering Souls. Opponent hits us. Sure, opponent's deck is fair-ish. Um, let's draw. Firebolt's actually excellent. Firebolt, Valky. Library. Oh, that was that was a nice little draw there. P and Karenalar. Tapping properly. Oh, that was that was key. That was clutch. All right, P and Karen down. Board dealt with for the moment. Yeah, that was that was perfect. Uh, probably Tinker for Blightsteel, most likely. And just trust that we can uh we can ride it home. About it, combat. Um, yeah, we'll just take it for now. Don't want to get hit by Thief of Sanity. Silliest EDH deck you've seen in Commander Clash. Ooh, so actually, <laughs> a little bit of a, a preview. I think the deck that I'm playing this week is one of the silliest decks I've played on Commander Clash. It really, it, oh... All right, well, we know our opponent's hand. Thievus and a Thieving Skydiver. They take a medium-powered extra turn. They go to combat. They attack. We will take it again. Wait, was our opponent playing Eternal Witness? No, that was last, last matchup. Opponent. Did you draw something awesome? But yeah, the one this week is actually sweet. There was a Mono Black Storm deck I played forever ago that was interesting. Tomer has some cool decks, too. Like, Six Drop Tribal is pretty a pretty goofy idea. Alright, opponent draws a him, gets rid of our Ponder. Well, we'll see. Wow, opponent's not going to play anything. We will... Draw a card. One, two, three. Well, I guess we better... Hedge ya. Pass the turn. We don't want to get our... Our cohesive portal stolen. Opponent, uh, combat, gonna go attacking. This is close, this is super close. Opponent, combat. Hits us. Yeah, 
I guess we got a black A spirit. Down to seven. Land. So I assume this is Kick Skydriver try to steal our our portal, and then we commit it. Alright. You can try again in a couple turns. Yes, it's gonna be close. We have draws that are very good if we can find them. Draw an extra card. Well, negate's not really one of them. One, two, three, hmm. Well. Coalition Relic. Go. My worry is just dying to dying to the Steam of Sanity. So what deck uh, what deck are you gonna build first from Modern Horizons? What's the first commander deck you're gonna build from Modern Horizons? Opponent goes attacking. How bad does it get if we tap out here? They only have one card. All right, so we block here. We sack. Kill the Rager. Squirrel Tribal is going to be sweet. Enchantress also seems really sweet. Opponent. What was their draw? All right. Thief of Sanity down. Well, charge up the Relic. Untap. Draw an extra card. Get a mana. Impulse with pretty hard one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Now take Lodestone. Play the land. Wow, this is ridiculously close. Pass the turn. This has been a wild game. We can't fireball. No, no, no. If we fireball the. So we fireball the Thief of Sanity. Then our opponent, Thieving Skydivers, steals our cohesive portal. What we gotta do is we gotta pass. We gotta use Pian uh, Karen to sack Mox Diamond to kill Thief of Sanity. And then if our opponent kicks Thieving Skydiver to try to steal cohesive portal, we can sack the portal and kill the Skydiver and not give it to our opponent. Yeah, that's so that's I think that's our game plan. If we tap out for Firebolt, we get rid of this, but then we give our opponent extra card draw and probably lose. So I think I think that's our best pathway forward. We are going to try to avoid getting hit by Thief of Sanity. That is that is not part of our plan, but we also want to avoid giving our opponent cohesive portal if we can. And now we still have the the bolt left over for the future, which is nice. All right, opponent. What do you got, friend? What do you got? Opponent's kind of sweet. Kind of like Esper, Esper Tempo. 
Hey, see you, Necronexus. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, well, no, if we... One, two, three, four, five. If we pay five for Fireball, then we don't have three for P and Karen. We're a, a mana, a mana short. I'm good, Azenbull. How are you? Opponent. Thinking things over. Yeah. I mean, Lodestone probably is. That would be another option just to play the Lodestone. Fusion 14 GT. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we're not storming at the moment. No, we are. We are tinkering. Tinkering around and talking MH2. Oh, I know. I cannot wait for Modern Horizons. I cannot wait. The sooner, the better. Uh, all right, opponent, gonna untap. So, are you buying a box? Is anyone is anyone taking the plunge and buying sealed product? I feel like I gotta get at least one because the set is so sweet, and I'm sure it's gonna be good value. It's just so much up front. Oh, if they do this pre combat, it's insane for us. Okay. Well, this is the best case scenario. Opponent. Yeah, well. One, two, three. Wow, this works out even better. So we get to throw the portal. Kill the thief of sanity. Upload it. Goes attacking. Getting two from your LGS. How uh, how much are they from your LGS? Yeah, collector's booster is what I want. Two. I just know they're risky, but you know, one, two, three. You know, I guess we can take one. Well, this doesn't end up being a really long game. All right, we'll take the one. Down to six. Throw Mox Diamond at the Skydiver. Charge this up. Untap. Ever flowing chalice. Um, yeah, add a mana. Getting up to six cards would be nice. I don't know if I want to give our opponent a new hand, though. We could. I wonder if it's worth it. Oh, we're going to time out. We're so going to time out this game. Ooh, 340 is actually a good price. Yeah, P and Karen's been great. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, let's multi kick a chalice. X2. And then. Lodestone Golem and hit ya. All right, we got it. We have to not only win, but we have to not time out, which is becoming a concern. Leave up the negate, pass the turn. At some point, we can draw seven if we want to. I wish we had a Hall Breacher. Hall Breacher would be great for us. About it, Kabat. Hits us. Sure. Down to five. The spirit beatdown is on. Charge up the relic. Untap. Draw a useless land. Well, add a mana. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eh, all right. Go to combat. Hit ya. Put it down to eight. Pass the turn. I think we're going to win it. I think we're going to win it. I think we're going to win it. Opponent. Wait, why can't we cast negate? I'm so confused. Why can't we cast negate? Oh, you mean last turn. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Just kidding. We're up 2-1. and one. We got there. Going for the 3-0. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's been a long it's been a long 10 days of spoilers i don't know why i thought we still had to win another match or, or a game to win that match but okay <laughs> uh okay 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 also we're a lutri deck chat why don't you ever remind me that we have a companion <laughs> i i blame you chat <laughs> hey what's up elf uh have a have a wonderful evening yeah, well, all the mana. Hopefully we draw into something. <laughs> hey, see you, Mork. Uh, all right. Hmm. Well, Volcanic Island. Mox Diamond. I mean, we got all the mana in the world. Soul Ring. Coalition Relic. Go! Can we find a payoff? Worst case, it's gonna be Lutri time. It's gonna be Lutri time. <sighs> About it, swamp. Mesmeric fiend. Aw, our our ramp, not a ramp. <laughs> this is a good EDH start. Well, take up the take up the relic. Something like Inferno Titan or Tinker. Ooh, ooh. Or or Island, I mean. <laughs> well, I had a mana. Might as well get Lutri. Spire Bluff Canal, go. Karn would be spectacular. Yeah, any of those things would be great. A quick reminder, as we're uh, going through this, that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. And if you need some Modern Horizons 2 card, you can get them at cardkingdom.com. About it. Combat. No attacks. Lutri playing defense. <laughs> Boat it. Passes. Oh. There it is, but do we cast it? This is a black deck just passing with all their mana up. A blue deck, do. I don't think we do. I think we wait. I think we wait and make our opponent... I don't think we do it. Lutri is super good in singleton formats. It's just a it's just a free roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we're gonna pass. We're not we're not gonna do it. Yeah, we can see. Maybe we can get our opponent to tap out for Lutri. Maybe we can find our negate. Alright, opponent makes a little shark. So opponent's just like blue black control. They're just like straight up blue black control by the looks. About it. Budget Braid stack. Ooh. I wonder if Braids will have a shot in Modern. I'm definitely excited to try Braids in Modern. Miles Black, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, just an ever-flowing chalice. Nothing. Nothing great. I don't even think Lutri is enough of a threat to get our opponent to tap out. I think we just... I think we just wait. We're only taking one. Ugh. Would be nice to stop drawing lands. Drawing a uh, drawing more lands is not great. We have so much mana this game. Yeah, that's the problem I'm having with Modern Horizons too. Is there's just so many decks I want to build. I'm actually I love Spoiler Season, but I'm actually kind of oh come on now. I'm actually kind of excited for it to end. Specifically because it means I'm going to have time to start trying to brew decks now. Uh, mind Twist. Opponent is more likely to have Mind Twist. <laughs> As we just learned. <laughs> oh, opponent. But the, I think the actual answer is Counter Spell. Or a Counter Spell. I think is more common than a Discard Spell. Big draw. Well, that's pretty good. That works, hopefully. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, three, five, six. Inferno Titan. Ping you, ping you, ping you. Sweep the board. Get a chalice. Hit ya with our little friend Ludri. 
<laughs> they really need to they need to add more stuff to arena i was thinking i was thinking about arena and it kind of it kind of feels like and maybe this is maybe this is unfair maybe this is wrong but it kind of feels like like wizards <laughs> makes arena cost a ton and hasn't done that much to make arena formats healthier oh no even more lands good golly and hasn't done that much to make arena formats healthy and uh, and strong because they assume that people like me are just going to pay so much money they come out ahead anyway all right i was not expecting that snuff out well get in with the loot tree opponent blocks with Gonti. so many people are playing steal your stuff decks one two three four five six seven eight i mean where did the where did the hard cast plate steal uh plate steel stage of this game ever flowing chalice go historic is good it's just ridiculously expensive like it's just so expensive so that's kind of the the issue with historic, I think. Well, charge up the relic. Come on, big draw, big draw, big draw, big draw. Opponent passing. Oh, sweet mother. All right. Well, the all mana plan continues past the turn. We have a new donation for Rob. Swing for zero. I'm excited to announce that I was just hired at Card Kingdom. I'm now a full-time collection buyer. Magic is finally paying my bills. That sounds amazing. Oh, opponent. Opponent also has Titan. All right, that's uh, that's bad news. Opponent got our Karn, too. All right. We really need a good draw this time, deck. I was joking last year, and this time I'm serious. We really actually need a good draw. Congratulations, Wings for Zero. That's super exciting. Actually, it sounds like it'd be kind of a kind of a fun job. I always liked buying collections and sorting magic cards. All right, this is it. This is it. We need a good one. Metal Worker. Well, that'll stop a grave. Are we just dead? Do we even do we just stop showing them our deck? Is there anything? So we're taking six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, we're just we're just dead. All right. Well, <laughs> all the mana, but uh, well, we were gonna eventually draw real cards. That was that was very awkward running, I will say. Ha, 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 ha. How do we fight this deck? Brain freeze out, wildfire doesn't seem great. Brutality in necromancy, try it like that. All right, we get to play first. Leotri revealed. Well, all right, not as fast as in the past, and no blue mana. But. Porcelain Legionnaire Tinker could be a thing if we draw a blue source. MH2 is pretty sweet. Really wish they used the same design for of uh, Modern Horizons to core sets. Ooh, that would be interesting. I don't know if we're getting I don't know if we're getting core sets anymore. I think core sets might be over. I think I don't know. We're getting the D D set this year. Do you think we're gonna get the return of core sets? I'm not convinced that we are. I think that. I think that next year is going to be interesting in Magic. Well, I don't know that core sets are over, period. But I do know that this year's core set is replaced by the D&D crossover. Next year, there's got to be something next winter. There's got to be. Here's my guess. My guess is we're getting universes beyond. Oh, there goes our ramp, too. My guess is we're getting universes beyond. Oh, no. Oh, what a way to lose the 3-0 to not drawing an island. My guess is we're getting universes beyond next winter. With them moving the second Innistrad set up to, to the fall, there's no way they're releasing two Innistrad strats in, like, September and November and then not releasing anything till uh till like the end of march or april when the next set would be 
It's gotta, it's gotta be, it's gotta be universes beyond or something similar. Oh, come, come on now. Come on now, Doug. Well, okay. Metal worker. <laughs> we are not good at drawing our blue swords. Our potentially game winning tinker out a blight steel blue source hit ya. Spike footsteps of the Gorio. I don't know if it's me. Maybe. But I think it's, I think it's at least partly. Partly be oh just because of the set in general opponent Okos Elks Still no blue mana. I'll go to combat. Attack Oko. Kill Oko. Oh, we've had if we could mash our hands together. Last game we had all the mana, but none of the action. This game we have the win hanging out in our hand, but none of the mana. All right, go go metal worker elk. <laughs> oh, but oh, I don't want days in modern. Honestly, days is not a. Well, opponents go see a lot of lands. Days is not a protect you from unfair things counter spell. It is a do unfair things counter spell. About it passes. Oh my god, it's a blue source. Um, well, huh. Go to combat, attack you. Opponent blocks metal worker trades. Oh, if they got our Karn, it's so bad. Lodestone. Do you have a counter? Oh my goodness. The mana screw keeps punishing us. Oh! Oh no! Not like this! About it. Land. And. Leovold. And. Wow, this is like the same deck we played last round. Opponent passes. Oh, we're going to lose to our own Karn. I'm not sure that tinkering out blight steals enough. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, if we target them, then they just get to draw with Leovold. Ponder's dead. Well, go to combat attack. Opponent takes it. Whenever you or a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell. So if we collected brutality two modes, are they going to draw two? They actually draw one, right? Brutality, two modes. Well, the thing is, if they, sure, if they have Karn, it's over, but we'll also give our opponent two turns of hitting us with Thiefus Sanity to hit Karn or commit to memory. So I don't know if we can just tinker out Blightsteel with this Thief of Sanity hanging out. Mind Twist for three doesn't feel great because they draw a card and then we get hit by Thief of Sanity. I think step one is kill Thief of Sanity. I think we 
two modes. Duress kill. Discard the ponder. That's never going to work with Leovold out. Oh, okay. Apparently our opponent does get to draw two cards. Wow, Leovold is ridiculously broken. Sweet mother. Really? Uh, okay, so... Wow, Leopold is ridiculous. Well, I think we're playing Emery. Yeah, that's insane. Well, take Seagate, I guess. Emery. Mill some cards. Well, there's... There's some of the lands we've been needing. <laughs> About it. Untaps. So this Resto shuts down our offense. Opponent. Breeding pool tapped. Well, we shall see. Opponent goes attacking. Hits us. Down to 15. And <laughs> necromancy is actually sweet if we could resolve it. Uh, well, Emery. For Lodestone. Cast it. Get it remanded. Yeah, there's the remand. No attacks. Restoration Angel. Oh, I think they got us. Well, yeah, Mind Twist isn't going to be very good. Because of Leovold. And because we've just... <laughs> Last game we had like 15 mana, but we couldn't find action. This game... Whew, we have been fighting and clawing for every bit of mana. Opponent finds Inquisition. I don't know if I agree with the idea that you should have taken Remand. I feel like we can play through the Remand, but if our opponent just casts Seagate Restoration and goes up to nine cards in hand, uh, I don't see a pathway to us winning at that point. That that would be my that would be my concern. Inferno Titan. Huh. So Leovold's bad. Thief of Sanity's bad. Gonti targets hmm do you think that questing beast will hold its value once it's out of standard ooh that is a, a good question well let's see if we can get back our coalition relic at some point we need enough mana to try to cast our spells Collision Relic. Opponent. What is the current Questing Beast price? Questing Beast, $13. Ah, uh, Maybe. I don't think it'll... Uh-oh. Wow, that's a... That is a... That's a pretty good one for our opponent to draw. All right. Cryptic off the top. Well, this is getting worse by the second. Opponent. I mean, if we cast Tinker any of those times, it's getting countered, right? <laughs> we have 
consistently seen we have consistently seen our opponent top deck encounters so i don't think tinker would have worked any of those situations the bigger issue is now we're just dead to the scarab god and that just beats us right now immediately so oh yeah we just we didn't have the mana we didn't have the mana to do anything I don't know how our opponent got their mana to work. <laughs> the whole one white source restoration angel plan coming together. Um Yeah, this one's just this one's just over. I mean we can tinker, but it doesn't do anything. I we'll we'll do it. We'll do it for fun. But I mean the Scarab God beats a Blight Steel a hundred times over. But uh we will we will do it. Boom. Blight steal. But our opponent gets to Scarab God for Gonti or Muldrifter. And then they get to double Scarab God. So it's we're just literally dead. I mean we can tinker, we're just dead. Uh Blight Steel is the main the main one. So opponent, Muldrifter. And Oh, well, our deck was definitely sweet. Disappointing end to this draft, because we just did not, our deck did not run very well this match, but I feel like our deck is of a power level where we definitely could have won this match. Our opponent's deck looks, uh, looks fine too. Looks like a good legacy cube deck. I don't know. I don't know. This would be a deck that I would consider great in legacy cube. It looks a little fair for vintage cube, but. It worked out here. Opponent. <laughs> Top deck is that our mind twist? All right, we'll just we'll just call it. There's no way we can win anyway. Oh well, that deck was sweet. We just had some tough, tough running that last match. All right, well we'll uh, we'll start one more. We'll see. We'll see how far we get. I uh, we'll do one more. We'll and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We should be able to get through some of it, at least. I mean, we can at least get through drafting in a game or two. Or a, a match or two. We'll see if we make it through the whole thing. So, do you think we'll get anything else sweet out of Modern Horizons? Or are we at the end? Are we at the end of spoilers? <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't think things look down. I think our deck was sweet. It was just... That last match was just annoying that we flooded into mana screw and just could not get our our game plan going modern horizons 2 spoilers and tomorrow uh we got the black one right the black one's demonic tutor i was trying to figure out what could the white one possibly be what could the white one possibly be that would be exciting like 56 cards left to be spoiled do we know are they like mostly just commons or is there something are there actually like higher rarity cards left all right what do we get pack one pick one hmm all right well strong cards in this pack jason mind sculptor better than all um grim monolith good ram spell Powerful ramp spell. Uh, Eternal Witness I like, but I don't want to first pick. Sneak Attack you can kind of build around. Thought Seize is good. I don't know if I would first pick it over Jace or Sneak Attack, though. So I think that Jace is the... Jace is the correct pick, I would say. I think Jace just goes into all different kinds of decks. I think that Sneak Attack might be the more fun pick. Pack one, pick one gives you a lot of picks to to build a sneak attack deck and find stuff to go with it. I'm kind of tempted to just take it. Yeah, that's kind of my concern with Jace. Jace is strong. It is definitely strong, but I think it just leads us into being... I'm going to take sneak attack. I think it just leads us into probably being some sort of... 
some sort of control style deck. Ooh, Exhum. I mean, Exhum does work well with Sneak Attack. Maybe we were like reanimator sneak attack like get big things on the battlefield and kill you <laughs> the sound of drag is the is a good part eh, i don't think birthing pod and sneak attack would work together very well there's a lot of fetch lands in this pack like what else what other than exhum would we take out of this pack snapcaster i guess snapcaster a fetch land Fetch land would be good to make sure our mana is good. I think it's either Exhum or a fetch land. Mm, I kind of like... I mean, Pod's not bad, but I don't think it works with Sneak Attack. I think those would be two very different decks. You know what? Let's just Exhum. Let's put our stamp on big... Wow. Tinker 2? Oh... Oh, there's also opposition. And there's like nothing for our first two picks. So Tinker's busted. Opposition, we're actually, we could take very early. And opposition, we could take very early. And actually try to build around it this time. Just take all the, just, just the broken cards. Just take, keep taking broken cards and trust that it's going to work out. Yeah, I mean that is a legit strategy. Just take <laughs> take the most busted things possible. Kiki, I feel like we're far away from being a Kiki deck. Let's take Tinker, I guess. All right, so we have we need things to cheat into play. <laughs> that is the TLDR. We need things to cheat into play. We have all the ways to cheat things into play, but we haven't found any of the things yet. We can reanimate things. We can sneak attack things. We can tinker things. Yeah, we might actually end up five color. I don't think we want crystal shard. Mana leak is fine. Chandra's fine. Shard is sweet for like a Panharmonicon style deck. I'm a little worried about just continually taking these support cards and not getting any thing to put into play with them. But, okay. <sighs> well, Thirst for Knowledge. I think it's either Thirst for Knowledge or Putrid Imp. Are there big things in this cube? I didn't read the I didn't read the primer. I didn't read the primer. <laughs> Hopefully there are big Eldrazi in this cube, or else we're gonna be in trouble. I think we're taking thirst. Puster and Imp is more explosive, but I think with how this deck is looking, I'd rather have the Cardra effect. Yeah, I mean, we got to stack the graveyard. We have multiple reanimation effects. We would give just about anything for, like, an Emrakul. That's what we need is, like, an Emrakul. Prismari Command actually seems great. Loots, kills, blows up artifacts. So we're going to need mana fixing. We're Grixis, but we're not Krim Grixis. We're, we're fun Grixis. Are there Eldrazi in this cube? I guess that's the real question. Are there Eldrazi in this cube, or do we need to be taking, like, Battle Spheres? I mean, maybe we gotta take Battle Sphere just so we have something. <laughs> I guess we should probably take it. I feel like Massacre Worm's more hit or miss. Questing Bees. Well, we can take Blood Crypt. Oh, hmm. I mean, they got all this reanimation stuff. There's gotta be something you can reanimate. Uh, Triumph's fine. All right, we're getting our mana. We're getting our mana fixed up a bit. Seagate Restoration, I guess? Okay, so there's Kozilex. Well, so we'll hit there eventually. So this is a version of Vintage Cube that LSV built. So it's it's not the same as the normal. You know, Burgi actually seems kind of sweet. And it does let us discard cards. 
I mean, the other... Do we take Kiki? Do we take Kiki, too, and just have every possible combo and hope for the best? <laughs> Virgie's probably better. Oh, all right, we'll take Kiki. Well, we're going all the way. We're going all the way. If it's a combo, it's going to be in our deck, and we'll figure the rest out later. <laughs> does it say discard a card? It does. I just don't think we're going to play Crystal Shard. Well, there's a Putrid Ramp. All right. Kenrith, I guess? That's kind of reanimatable. Oh, what I would give for... What I would give for, like, an Eldrazi. Like an Emrakul. We just need an Emrakul. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Yagmoth is a combo piece. I don't know if there's combos for it in Cube. Alishnorn, I mean... I mean, Alishnorn's okay. The problem is, you don't really want to sneak attack it. You don't really want to shallow grave it. You can't tinker it. So it's good... Specifically with Exhume. Ponder's, Ponder's never bad. You're, like, you're never going to be upset to have Ponder. Verdant Catacombs is pretty synergistic. It's black, red, or blue. That actually gets all of our colors, which is pretty powerful. Wow! Ridiculously huge donation. Painful Truths is sweet. Strip Mine to get Crucible on the wheel. Add that combo to the deck. I mean, I do like Strip Mine, and there is Crucible. Crucible, my wheel. All right, we're, we're taking Strip Mine. That's probably not the correct pick, but we are taking that pick. We have a new donation from McGarry. $100 donation. What new decks enabled by MH2 are you most excited to play? Any deck you wish would get more support in a future MH2. H Satu. Well, McGarry, thank you for the massive donation. Very much appreciate it. Oh my goodness, what are we taking? We're not going to get a reanimation target, are we? We're going to take all this reanimation stuff and we're just not going to have a target. Maybe we got to go Sedge more Witch backup plan? So Workshop, we don't really have the artifacts for. Dark Sleek Shores is fine. Sedge more Witch doesn't seem that bad. Darksley Shores is decent. I kind of just want to take Sedgemore. Let's take Sedgemore. I mean, we do need to... We do need to have a way to win the game eventually. Somehow. Some way. So... That is a that is a great question, McCary, but it's actually a very difficult question because there's like a million Modern Horizons decks I want to build, but some that I'm especially excited about, just off the top of my head, and this is not an exclusive, uh, exhaustive list, but up, excuse me, upheaval I'm very excited about, Shaman I'm really excited about, Panharmonic on Wizards I'm really excited about, um, those are those are at the top. The free spell, like Grief Ephemerate deck, Domain Zoo with Ragavan and Sign of Draco and the new Kavu, Titania, like land destruction loop stuff. This pack is bad for us. Ugh. Brawl, maybe? This deck is this deck has gone completely off the rails. I'm starting to think this cube does not support reanimator. Okay, well, Ulamog, Ulamog is a thing that we can cheat into play. We probably have to take it. Unfortunately, now, <laughs> after getting nothing for a million, a million packs, we have Pestermite and Ulamog, and Worm Coil is not the end of the world. But wait, Braids Strip Mine is the nuts. Wait, how does Braids and Strip Mine work together? Okay, okay, I'm feeling I'm feeling slightly slightly better about our life now that we got two Eldrazi in a row. Oh, okay. Wait, oh conspiracy theorists would be cute in this deck. Reanimate would also be sweet, but Alright. Oh, I feel better. I feel better. I thought we were just not at all going to get anything to put into play, but it looks like we might have gotten there. Okay. Now we actually, we got a plan. We got a plan. Whether or not it's a good plan remains to be seen. But we do actually have a plan now. 
Yeah, reanimate coming back would be good. As far as archetypes that could use, that I would still like to see powered up, I haven't had a chance to dig into it yet. Ask me again. You don't got to donate, obviously. But uh, ask, ask me again in like a week. Spoiler season is just mostly about me trying to keep up on all the new cards. So I haven't really had time to think through like, oh, I wish this had gotten powered up and it didn't. I guess an easy answer would be like... I guess an easy answer would be uh, would be something like uh, like ninjas. Ninjas was a tribe that I really liked and got powered up some in Modern Horizons one, but hasn't really gotten anything since that. So Dragon Lord Atark is kind of interesting. Is that good enough? That's probably good enough. Blood Chief's thirst would also be fine. Yeah, we'll take we'll take a Tarka. Aw. Wait, was this the Was this the pack with with Crucible? I think it was. Maybe it's the next one. Talisman or Painful Truce? We'll take Metamorph. I don't know. That's super close. We'll take Liliana's... Liliana's Triumph's fine for a bit more removal. A Braid, fine for more removal. Pestermite comes back for combo number two. No one takes it as Hugo's second right for some reason. No one. Conspiracy Theorist actually seems good in this deck. Doretti seems fine. Okay, I mean... We got a plan. Our mana's still pretty rough, but we got We actually got a plan. We got a plan. We got a plan. Towel that we got a towel is man for <laughs> for ramping and fixing our mana. Alright, so right now we have two Eldrazi. We got a Tarka Battlesphere. We can sneak attack them into play. We can I don't know if we're gonna be tinkering, but potentially tinker Battlesphere into play. We can also Kiki Cheeky Pestervite. We have Prismari Command Chartacores. Putrid Imp, Conspiracy Theorist to stock our graveyard. We have Reanimation, Reanimation, Reanimation. I mean, that's, that's kind of a that's kind of a thing. That's kind of a thing that seems reasonable. Uh, hmm. Wow. That's a lot of good cards. That is a lot of good cards in one pack. We have a Mox. We have a Soul Ring. We have a Wasteland in an Upheaval. I actually think Soul Ring is better than Mox in this deck. I think. I think Soul Ring is better. It's close. We have another new donation. I tend to think that Soul Ring is better than everything about Black Lotus. Have you ever built an EDH, a uh, new donation from Lucid $3 donation? Have you ever built an EDH deck with a bunch of pull winning against odds cars in it? I feel like that would be fun. Who, I think I've played Win the Game Tribal, so sort of, but I don't know if it's ever been specifically based on cards that were on against the odds. That is a good idea though. Oh, speaking of against the odds, that's something I wanted to ask you. What uh, what do you think is at the top of the list for Modern Horizons 2 against odds? I didn't realize that MH2 goes online Thursday, so we can actually play it for next week's episode. So what is what is at the top of the list what, as far as potential against odds cards, in your opinion? Ooh. So Rankle's a discard outlet. Looter's also a discard outlet. That might be better. We do want more mana fixing one of these one of these days. Well, Dragonstorm's already coming in historic. Squirrels is Squirrels is a good one. Ooze Storm would could be any uh could be a cool a cool one. Chance Encounter is one that I was considering. I think it's gonna be super janky though. Yeah, we have uh we have Shallow Grave. Shallow Grave reanimates at instant speed. I guess it doesn't work as well with Looter uh, Elcor. Now we'll take Looter. 
Bazaar of Baghdad. Exile the top key cards of your library and put a land into play among them. Until end of turn, for each non-land card type, you may cast one. Oh. Huh. Ooh, also wheel. Hmm. Hmm. Also, a uh, uh, <laughs> towel is man. Cra crab tribal would be a good one. Upheaval is definitely on my on my list. Splinter twin to go with the pestermite. Just keep adding combos to the deck. Yeah, I don't know if we can go into into green. I mean, I guess we just keep stacking up. We'll just keep stacking up broken cards. We'll keep stacking up broken cards in hopes, <laughs> hope that it works out some. It, recruiter to get Kiki Jiki or Pestermite. <laughs> we can also take another Talisman. <laughs> tomb, does, I think our mana already, already is rough. I don't know if we can support Tomb. So this gets Brawl Metamorph. Kiki. Yeah, all right. <laughs> no mana fixing in our colors. Ren six strip binds also a lock. I just don't. I don't think our mana can support it. We can't support it. <laughs> Reset what? Placar. Well. If we we have every combo possible. Our mana is absolutely putrid, and that is a problem. But wait, does this go infinite in some way or another? Kiki, zealous conscripts. Yeah, okay. We have every we have every combo. But can we actually cast any of them is going to be the question. Because our mana is so ridiculously sketchy. We are taking we are taking the Towelist Man. The tutor would be fine, but we really need this mana fixing. We need we need the mana fixing in every way possible. Alright. Yeah, get in there, Towelis Man. Little expensive for reanimation. Woodfall Primus can be decent reanimation target. Actually, Hazaret lets us discard cards, doesn't it? Hmm. All right, we'll take Hazaret. White, red. Uh, sure. I mean, I guess we do have a Triome. All right, get in the pile. I'm gonna do Zoggery or Wheel of Fortune. I don't think we can actually play green cards. I just don't think we have enough enough mana to make it work. Ah. I think we're taking Augury for the combo. Talus Man. Flame Blast in the sideboard. Artifact Destruction in the sideboard. Rich Oh, this deck. <sighs> I I don't know what to think. I do not know what to think. So, bad news is we have the worst mana base in the history of magic and are probably not going to get to cast anything. Uh, so, <laughs> this pile of cards. Yagma's out. All right, how can we win this game? So we have Kozilek Ulamog, Atarka Battlesphere, which work with sneak attack, shallow. Well, all right. So let's let's start with sneak attack. We got sneak attack. Then we have Kiki, zealous conscripts, splinter twin, imperial recruiter, pestermite. Then we have card filtering. <laughs> maybe maybe we should just be. Maybe we'd be better as just is it? Maybe maybe we should just be an is it deck. Maybe we have to be an is it deck because we don't really have the mana to. Well, I mean we do have two black talismans. We're gonna have to cut something. So what does black offer? We don't need Liliana's Triumph at the moment. 
Black gives us two reanimation spells, essentially. Exhume and Shallow Grave. Sedgemore Witch. Yeah, I think cutting black makes the most sense. Or at least minimizing it. Kenrith, we probably don't actually need to play. I mean, we could throw in, like, an Exhume if we wanted to. This deck is pretty pile -y. Renin Six. I know what combos would strip mine, but we just don't have the mana for it. Tinker can only get Battlesphere. I don't think we can actually play Tinker. So we have Ramp. Discard. Discard. Interaction. Huh. Kenrith also reanimates. Uh, that's true it does. But we don't have white mana, so I don't know how we would actually actually get it into play. <laughs> like, our mana is just so sketchy. I actually feel like Augury is pretty good. I feel like Augury can just win us a game by hitting an Eldrazi. That card actually kind of appeals to me. <laughs> Maybe we get... Without... <sighs> Maybe we don't play Battlesphere... Battlesphere doesn't feel all that good with. I mean, we already have Battlesphere in at the moment. I mean, we got we got a few talismans. <laughs> we could we could get there. <laughs> that seems possible. We'd make a we'd make a treasure token. Huh. So we're just kind of looting through our deck trying to find a combo, essentially. That's the that's the plan. I mean, I guess it could work. Probably don't really need Brawl. I'm not even sure. Maybe we just go down Battlesphere? I don't think I'm going to get rid of Augury. I think, I think I like Augury. And we have, like, Soul Ring and stuff. I don't think it's that impossible that we get to... Yeah, Hazard was going to be as a discard outlet, but I don't think we need it. And because we've cut most of the reanimation stuff. Hello! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we probably don't need as many as many discard outlets. We can still use just some, some looting effects to try to find our combo pieces. Like, we do have very few cards that actually matter, and we need to find them. So I think the, the looting effects are good for that. But, like, Duretti can probably go. What's Duretti doing? It's just looting, looting nothing. So get rid of Duretti. We can keep Augury. I mean, this doesn't look... <clears throat> it doesn't look ridiculously bad. It doesn't look insane or anything. But it, it, seems, it seems functional. Yeah. I mean, I think this is it. So we get a Triome. We get a Strip Mine. And uh, a bunch of basics. <laughs> oh, so the lesson for this: if you ever, if you ever do a cube draft, the lesson that you could take away from this draft is draft lands. It's easy to not draft lands and draft more good cards. But as you saw here, we have a lot of high picks that we're not playing, and we have a really bad mana base. So you're always gonna get enough. You're always going to get enough playables in cube. So even spending very high picks on lands is often worth it. So uh, Blood Crypt is, uh, is a shock, unfortunately. So it does not. If it could, if it was a fetch, whew, would have been good. Yep, 17 lands. We might need to hard cast an Eldrazi. All right, chat. Can this deck actually win a game? <laughs> is it possible? I mean, the deck... I actually think the deck's powerful. It's just going to be inconsistent. I think that's the... I think that's the TLDR is powerful yet inconsistent. I'm not really worried about flooding too much because we do have Charticors, Looter, Conspiracy Theorist, uh, Thirst for Knowledge, Prismari Command. So we got a lot of ways to filter through our deck. Three and zero for sure. We almost three would the first one. <laughs> almost, almost, almost. Are y'all gonna try Modern Horizons Two Limited? I think we might do a. Are you having pre-releases? 
where you're at for Modern Horizons 2. I think we might try Modern Horizons 2 draft on Thursday and then start off and then start off next week with with a with a bunch of constructed. Noob question, what is the difference between MTG Online and MTG Arena? Oh, that is a that is a good question. So Magic Online has been around for a long time. Magic Online's been around since 2003 or something. Uh, and Magic Green is a more recent, a more recent way to play Magic Online. The biggest difference is Magic Online, it looks pretty old. It doesn't have as many of the flashy graphics that, uh, that Arena has. Arena has a lot more flashy graphics. Arena only a standard and a format they made for Arena called Historic, along with Draft, while Magic Online has modern and legacy and a lot of older formats. So I would say if you're if you're just getting into Magic, I would probably start with with uh, Magic Arena for sure. On the other hand, uh, Magic Online does offer things that Magic Arena does not as far as formats and stuff. Eh, get this whole ring going. Uh, oh, jeez. That's a blowout. First draft went well. We ended up, uh, we won our first two and then lost, lost in the finals. Yikes. Well, this hand had a lot of what we want, except the spirit of the labyrinth just absolutely owns us. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Is Umaru. Well, this might be a quick one. Pona hits us. Come on, sneak attack. Oh, hmm. I guess we gotta just play it and hope that it doesn't get killed, because we only have one red source at the moment because of our herbal mana base. Well, that is the card we asked for. Sneak attack. Bonus X the clue. All right. Well, hopefully they don't draw an answer. Probably should have played the land first because of mana tithe. All right. Well, a little punished by your bad mana, but we'll see about it. A taps. Come on. Come on. You better not be Skyclave apparitioning us or whatever about it. About it. Is it even enough? Is Kozilek enough? Oh, all right. All right, so bonus just taxing us out, and uh, well, the heart of the cards has failed us. The spirit of the labyrinth really just won our opponent this game, honestly. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, and two, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, well, opponent's playing some taxes. Do we have removal? I guess we're bringing just basically any removal, which means incinerate. <laughs> so incinerate in, because we gotta be able to kill these very obnoxious little creatures. Ugh. Ugh. That was kind of working, too, if our opponent wasn't so obnoxious. All right, run it like that. Run and six kills things. We just do not really have the ability to cast it's the problem. Our deck can barely cast uh, blue and red cards, let alone let alone throwing in uh, other other cards. <laughs> that is the problem. Well, at least this time we're gonna get to chart a course before our opponent taxes it. Hopefully. Oh, uh, booted. Planes and passes. Well. Eh, conspiracy theorist. Pass the turn. Student of warfare, sure. Opponent. Passes. I don't go to combat. Pony up a one lander? That's greedy.
discard a mountain. Hit ya. This is looking better. Yeah, I mean, it's a little ways away, but we do have Zealous Conscripts and Splinter Twin. Pass the turn. Opponent leveling up. Oh no. Oh no. Why did our opponent keep this hand? Found it hits us. Play the land. Towel is man of dominance. Uh, I guess we don't got to do this now. Go to combat. Hit ya. Well, I think we're pretty close to being able to win. Pass the turret. So we can Prismari command. Zealous conscripts. Mox, okay. Opponent. Oh, discarding Charticors would probably be good. I guess I was thinking that you could play lands off Conspiracy Theorist, but I guess you can't. I was thinking it was like Expressive Iteration, where discarding a land is the easiest way to take advantage of it, but I first time I played Conspiracy Theorist, so my expectation was we'd <laughs> We'd be able to play the land, but I guess it is cast it rather than play it, so it doesn't work with lands. Opponent combat. Yeah, opponent's getting mana screwed, but I think it's partly... It's got to be at least partly on them because they kept a one-lander for some reason. <laughs> that is a... That is a greedy keep. Hmm. That is annoying. Well, Prismari Command. So we're going down to one land. Hmm. How do we do this? Should have abraded the mocks in combat. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I feel like there might be a little bit of hindsight bias here. Huh. Yeah. So make a treasure, blow up the mox. So maybe our opponent's been intentionally not playing lands to try to to try to make this happen. I mean, we want to get cards out of our hand, so our opponent has to discard more. Uh, we will keep a red source. Opponent. So opponent's got to discard two. We each keep our creature. I mean, this isn't the end of the world. Opponent, so we lose three lands. Our opponent has to discard two cards. So it's not it's not that bad. It's not great, but it's it's not the absolute end of the world. Bad play. What uh what was the bad play, Klimbo Biano? Opponent. Discard self a spirit crucible worlds. Oh, maybe they were just like oh. Boy, that's hard to pass up. That's really hard to pass up. <laughs> well, strip mine. Kill your planes. 
go to combat. All right, you may exile. So you don't have to exile. Go to combat, attack. Loot away Ulamog. Uh, okay, we do not want to exile. Shuffle things in, hit ya. Pass the turn. Opponent's not giving up. <laughs> no lands, no problem. <laughs> the strip, our strip mine combo did come through. Opponent uh, hits us to 17. Well, go to combat. Attack you. No looting. Hit ya. Chart, of course. Land. Okay, I think that worked out in our favor. That definitely worked out in our favor. Ooh, there's a new new spoiler. Opponents. <laughs> Getting so punished. We're gonna have to be aware of Valence in, in game two. <laughs> or game three, rather. I'm playing Island. Play Zealous Conscripts. Yoink your student of warfare. Smack ya. So close to the flawless victory opponent. Uh, no, we will not pay. I think our opponent balanced themselves out of this game. About it. <laughs> I think we got him. And about it, scoops it up. New spoiler, Tavern Scoundrel. Four mana, one three. When you win a coin flip, create two treasures. Sack another, tap it, pay one. Sack another permanent, flip a coin. Ooh. That's actually kind of sweet. That seems sweet for a coin flipping deck. Actually, very powerful in a coin flipping deck. What is, what is the best way? What is the best way? To win with chance encounter in modern, the the card that makes you makes you win ten coin flips. What is the what is the way? Is there anything that just lets you keep flipping coins and flipping coins and flipping coins? Well, I guess we keep this and and hope that we draw into sneak attack. Potential to go infinite with Mirror March. Like, so here's here's uh, here's a rules question. Uh oh. Let's see. Uh, so here's a rules question. Oh, I guess this is worded. I guess the way this is worded, it wouldn't work. I thought that the Afrites let you s just flip an infinite number of coins. Like, frenetic Afrit, zero, flip a coin. Target opponent calls heads or tails in the air. If the flip ends up in your favor, it phases out, otherwise bury it. So the way that's worded, does that let you... Does that let you just flip an infinite number of coins? Can you just be like, uh, activate this zero ability a million times... It seems like, yeah, the, the sliver, the sliver seems to have had its wording change, where it specifically says, if this is in play, so you flip it once, it's either getting exiled or being sacrificed, so you only get to flip once. I guess you could try to make a ton of slivers, and then you could flip it for each of them, which is something... I mean, obviously, Quirk's Thumb would, would probably be part of it. That's that's the easiest way to win coin flips. I don't think you can because of the way it's worded. Like, you pay zero, and then flipping the coin is part of the cost? The way the sliver is worded because of where the, where the colon is? If we look at it again, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure that's what it's doing. So all slivers have, so the the cost is zero. And then the effect is, 
If the permanent is on the battlefield, flip a coin. If you win, you flicker it. If not, you sacrifice it. So you could pay zero a million times, but the coin flipping effect would only happen once because after the coin flips, either it's going to be in exile or it's going to be in the graveyard. And since it has a clause that says if it's on the battlefield, all the future ones would, all the future ones would end up fizzling either way, I think. I don't pass the t uh, play the land past the turn. Opponent mana clash is a good one. That might be the that might be the way to go. Muta vault opponent combat hits us down to sixteen passes. Um, I'll play the land past the turn. See what our opponent does. And then ch the thing with chance encounter is a. Uh, oh, are we are we doing this? Hmm. Think it's worth just killing both of them, or should we keep waiting for something better? I guess we should probably do it. Eh, all right. So two damage, blow up an artifact. Oh, that's a good Prismari command. That's a, that is a very good Prismari command. Whoo, whoo, three mana two for one. Opponent Thrabes. Chance of counter means we need to win 10 coins. We got to play a four mana enchantment. We got to win 10 coin flips. And then we have to make it to our upkeep. That's a lot of coin flips. You would assume if you're 50% to win. If you're 50% to win. Then it would take 20 coin flips. The thing is. We've actually calculated my coin flipping stats. And I'm like 33% or something. So we're going to need to flip, what, 30, 30 coins? 30 coins. I mean, I guess you could try to flip one and then proliferate, but that feels a little, a little bit against the spirit, I would say, of, of, uh, of the card. Ranger Captain, ooh, Ranger Captain Vios. Well, Zealous Conscripts is basically a removal spell for that. Student Warfare. Now we will play Soul Ring. We will Zealous Conscripts. Grab your Ranger. Hit ya. And sack it. Pass the turn. Okay. Okay. Put it by be dead. Put it by be dead. Have Krim play the deck. I might I might have to. That might be the solution. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come on, land. This augury would be so good. So opponent, afraid of the combo. Well, we will thirst for knowledge. Discard in art. Oh, this is a game. This is a game. This is a game. Our sneak attack's paying off. Land. Sneak attack. We will activate it. Kozilek. Max Annihilation. Ho! Oh, that looks like game to me. That looks like game to me. Potent. Gonna keep the clue. <laughs> Gotta keep the clue in case they can draw a card. Wasteland. About it. <laughs> And now we get to Augury after all this. And opponent scoops it up. Whoo! Okay. Our random pile of things actually works. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah, our opponent should have sacked their dork in response. Although I don't think it actually I don't think it actually mattered. That damage wasn't really relevant. Their problem was sneak attack into Augury. I mean, 
our deck is our deck was a, we were just grabbing broken things and it seemed like it worked out but we were mostly just grabbing broken things We just got a bunch of combos. We jammed all the combos together and hoping we find the right one at the right time and it worked that match. Playing Thirst over Battlesphere on that turn was so greedy. <laughs> I mean, it draws cards. When it comes down to it, it does draw cards. <laughs> AC Oblog Squares, thanks for hanging out. Oh, all right. What are you up to, opponent? Can you stop our pile? Ooh. Oh. Hmm. Well, this this could be a combo hand if our opponent doesn't have a ton of counters. Uh, all right. We will try him go. How hyped are you for overloading that new mono black land destruction against Tron and Snow? Oh, I, would that card have been too overpowered if it left off the, the restrictions? Could we just have Sinkhole with, with Overload? Like, would that really be too good? <laughs> Phone it. Walking Ballista. Sure. I'll well, play a land and Towel is man. Go. I mean, it probably would be, but I am I am pretty excited for it. Do you think that MH2 will be worth it for the high price? So, my guess is that the EV will say yes. On the other hand, EV doesn't necessarily mean that any individual, any individual box or pack is going to be worth it. So it's important to keep that in mind that Eevee is Eevee is working with averages. So I think it'll be very possible to to open a bad box and get wrecked. But I do think that on average it'll probably be worth it even at the high price. What do you think tier 1 decks will look like after Modern Horizons 2? Modern's in for a shake up. Like, modern, I don't even know. I don't even know what modern is going to look like. It is going to look very, very different, I think. There's so many new things happening. Opponent hits us. So, I, I really don't know. I think some of the old decks will probably, will probably still be around, I would guess. But I think we're going to see a lot of new stuff. I think there's a lot of hate for... There's a lot of hate for, uh, like, fast combo decks which I think is a good thing. Little worried about how good something like blue white control is going to end up being, which it could be pretty strong. I don't play Imperial Recruiter. Is MH2 really priced high? Isn't it cheaper than MH1? Um Ugh, we take Pestermite, our opponent definitely knows what we're up to, but, yeah, I mean, make them, make them have the answer. So, last I looked, the price was insane. I can, I look on Amazon. So, right now on, right now on Amazon, I'm seeing collector's boosters at 428. Uh, set boosters at 273 and draft boosters at 275 which I believe is significantly higher than it was before I think you can get a, a somewhat cheaper price if you go to go to eBay but yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty expensive it is a pretty expensive set Opponent. Passes. Well, go to combat. Hit ya. Strip mine. Go. We need our boat to tap down, then we can just combo off and win. 
Yeah, I think that it was around 200-ish, wasn't it? And there weren't collector's boosters last time. The collector's boosters are definitely really expensive. Can someone explain to me the difference between set boosters and draft boosters? So draft boosters are designed for drafting. They, they're, they're the traditional booster. X cards in a pack. Ex oh, wow. Well, I guess we put them to the force test. Huh. Uh, wow, okay, Pestermite. Okay, untap. Did our opponent just not have it and uh, Splinter Twin? Huh! Oh, they didn't. Have, they didn't have it. They didn't have it. <laughs> okay, they even knew the Pester Bite was in our hand. So set boosters are smaller packs. You can get multiple rares or mythics in a pack. They are structured very differently. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of different slots, uh, which you would have to read about. I haven't actually memorized all the slots yet, but it's got like a wild card slot and it's got a showcase common and uncommon slot. So uh, while a draft booster is just the traditional 10 commons, three uncommons, a rare or mythic in general. So when will the price hike stop? When people stop buying the set, I think. <laughs> Like, I think, I think Wizards has no reason to not keep increasing prices because no matter what price they put stuff at, they sell out. So their incentive is to, is to keep increasing the prices because, you know, you know, it's better than selling a bunch of Modern Horizons for $200 a box, selling a bunch of Modern Horizons 2 for uh, $280 a box. So until, until eventually Wizards goes too far, and I think it will happen, like sooner or later, Wizards will increase prices too far and a, and a product will flop. Like, I think that is inevitable eventually. Once that happens, then things will become interesting again. Tier 57! Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Really wanted Fury to be a lightning bolt or at least have Flash. I'm surprised it didn't have Flash, actually. Especially since Pyrokinesis has Flash, and I don't think Pyrokinesis is just, like, overpowered or anything. When is this coming down two turns? Hmm. Uh, run out our Towelers, man. Pass the turn. I mean, in a perfect world, we draw red swords. <laughs> well, I guess I guess we're gonna have to wait anyway. We don't have the mana to uh, to cheat sneak attack into play. We need another land opponent. Grows the ballista hits us. We draw. An island. Well, sneak attack. Go. Does evoking grief count as discarding a card? No, right. Uh, it does not. So evoking, you're actually casting the creature, but just for a for an alternate cost, and. Yeah, you have to exile the cards for that whole cycle. You have to exile rather than discard a card. Yeah, Pyrokinesis still sees legacy play, although I think the difference between Sorcery and Instant is huge with that card. The one That's why I actually have Fury ranked lowest out of the cycle, is here's how I view that cycle. I view the cycle as you have Grief, which is the one that can win the game on its own with its triple thought seize ephemerate shenanigans or whatever so that's why i have that one right number one that's the one that actually can just win the game then the white one the blue one and the green one they're all really good hey what's up monin how are you uh they're all really good at preventing degenerate things green one free way to stop degenerate graveyard things white one blue one break up degenerate creature combos like heliod combo and whatnot then the red one the red one doesn't do either of those things. It doesn't win you the game, and because it doesn't have flash, it doesn't actually break up any of the combos. So I think the red one, it's not bad, but I think it's more of like a sideboard card that you bring in like a, a fiery justice or something that you bring in to deal with 
go wide creature decks and get a two for one out of it or something. So that's that's kind of my guess, but I think that does put the Redwood at the bottom of the pile because it doesn't kill your opponent and it doesn't stop you from dying. Fury absolutely wipes the floor of mid-rangey creature decks. The thing I do like about Fury is it is one of the... Boy, this mana's so rough. It is one of the only... Well, I guess we're going for it. Pulling a photo mana. Pumps Ballista. Eight, nine, ten. Well, yeah, our mana problems are crushing us. Well, we knew that going into it, that was going to be a problem. We knew it going into it. Uh, Seth keeps with my comments. Which cards are you bringing with first and modern? Oh, Zaza, sorry. Um, there's so many. Uh, I think upheaval is at the top of my list. I'm also really excited for shamans. Oh, this mana is literally killing us. Yeah, I mean, okay, sure. Kozilek. Annihilate ya, but this doesn't actually... We're just dead, I think. About it. Eight, nine, ten. They can sack all their mana and just grow the blista. Ugh! Well, the lesson of the draft, other than our, our deck doing sweet things, is is a uh, you gotta draft gotta draft lands gotta draft gotta draft more dual lands. <clears throat> you should do a ten new brews with Jim Davis. Oh, that could be that could be fun. Well, all right, run it back. If we we didn't have the red mana do a braid. Well, hey, we'll keep this, I guess. Oh, play the land, pass the turn. Oh, boot it. Uh, no, I don't think any of our talismans are actually red. So, yeah, we just had all, all the blue mana and, uh, and no way to do anything else. We had a single red mana. Is there a card that you think will be banned as quickly as Hogak? Um, probably not. I think, I think the closest thing to a, a broken card is Grief. I think Grief would be number one. Uh, that, I don't think it's going to be Hogak level, but who knows? So I think Grief would be the card that I most have my eye on. The other thing is, there's... Like last time with Modern Horizons, some of the stuff that ended up being broken was not necessarily the stuff that everyone expected to be broken. All right, Glendalendra Archmage. Well, one, two, three, four, Venser. Bounce the Archmage. Untap. Go to combat. Hit ya. Chart of course. Draw some cards. Hmm. Yeah, let's Imperial Recruiter. Grab a Kiki Jiki. Pass the turn. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> do you think Hulk catches a ban? Maybe. I mean, there's a lot of graveyard hate, so that's going to be the question. I'm not sure. So Hulk very well might be the... 
Wow, okay. Hulk very well might be the best thing to... The best thing to um, to win with as far as a reanimator deck. So that definitely seems possible to me. But Modern is a format with a lot of graveyard hate. So just how good the reanimator deck is going to be, it's probably going to be pretty... Oh, I guess we could have gotten a damage here, couldn't we? Eh, oops. Yeah, I guess the... Yeah, we, we cost ourselves one damage. Um, <laughs> there is... It is Sneaky Kiki. Boat it. Fazig. Leaving up mana. Ugh. One, two, three. Thirst for knowledge. Discard. I guess an artifact. Imperial recruiter copied. Get a looter Elcor. Go to combat. Hit ya. We're gonna play it slow. I mean, opponent's leaving mana up, and we are winning on board at the moment. Island. Looter. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're actually getting kinda close to hard casting, Eldrazi here. About it. What do you got for four mana? Just a shark. That is acceptable. All right. Yep. Yeah, shark away. Shark away, friend. Shark away. A vote of tabs. <laughs> Vintage Cube is super fun. It really is. Uh, po, Nint. Ooh, Ballista. All right. There's a Ballista. I'm going to kill the Kiki. Okay. I mean, the bigger problem for our opponent is we're just going to be able to hard cast Eldrazi here in a second. Well, Pester my untap. Block. Or we draw it like a sneak attack and just win immediately. Go to combat, hit ya. About it. Takes it. Oh, <gasps> augury, 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 augury. Okay, okay, let's think about this. Uh, Wait, does this let us cast? You may cast those spells. Okay, so discard Ulamog. Shuffle it in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Oh, they said we, uh-oh. They said we should cut it. What do we get? Oh, my God. Oh, we get the dream. So... Um, an opponent! Aha! <laughs> wow, those were some hits. So we were going to be able to st <laughs> strip mine, splinter twin, Ulamog, Seagate Restoration for free! <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, this deck's doing it. One more to go. One more to go, and our crazy pile's got the 3 0. Unseen Spectre, welcome to the fishbowl. Augury is busted if you're resolve it. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Whew. I mean, eight cards is a lot. You can see a lot of your deck when you resolve an Augury. What were we talking about? I can't remember. I feel like we were talking about modern, something, something modern related. Modern Horizons 2. Well, one more for the 3-0. Yeah, there's there's so many decks. What do you think of the new what do you think of this card? What do you think of Murktide Regent? How good How good is this gonna be? Is it better than Gurmag Angler? I think it's actually <laughs> I think it's actually like somewhat debatable. Yeah, that's. I think that card's interesting. I like that it's a upgraded Tombstalker, and Tombstalker, Tombstalker hasn't been good enough for a while. So I like that we have an upgraded Tombstalker. So that part's definitely sweet. Best dragon in the set. How good it's gonna be? I'm not sure.
Have you seen Magic 8 video with both grief and solitude? Uh, I have not. Uh, although grief and solitude, I think, are... I mean, the free spell cycle is definitely very geared for modern and some of the, the most exciting... The most exciting cards from the set, so... I expect them to, uh, to be pretty good. Opponent going to Mesmeric Fiend. So it might be might be reanimating. Squirrels definitely seem like a sweet against the odds deck. What are your thoughts on budget in modern with all the new tools from Modern Horizons 2? Yeah, um <laughs> Ooh, soul ring, eh? Huh. Well, Soul Ring, Imperial Recruiter. I think my big question is going to be the the cost of Modern Horizons too. One, two, three, four. Eh, we might as well. Might as well get the strip mine going, hit ya. My question is going to be, how many of the cards are we actually going to be able to play? Because how expensive are the singles going to be? So, uh, I am excited for some of the lower rarity stuff. And I do like how it uh, it powers up a lot of... A lot of, uh, like, third tier archetypes that pe could be good for budget magic. So, I'm definitely excited about that. Opponent. <laughs> yeah, Tavern's counter will seem sweet for a for a coin flip deck. I mean, if we if we discarded two conspiracy theories, we can strip mine, right? Opponent tap land and passes. And go to combat. Hit ya. This time we will actually discard. Discard Metamorph, exile it. Metamorph. Recruiter. Venser. Triumph. Go. I mean, it's kind of working. Uh, notice you've been doing a lot more legacy content. What have you been enjoying the most about it? Huh. So I've always liked legacy a lot. Like, legacy is, is a format that I've always really enjoyed playing for a long time. The problem is, I was always hesitant to do it for content too much just because it's so expensive that people seem to i was worried that people were not going to enjoy it or not want to watch it but it seems like maybe uh maybe that worry was unfounded because it's actually been surprisingly popular one two three four five six so oh, pass the turn Opponent, what do you got? Hey, what's up, Declared Bishop? How are you? Good to see you. So, uh, I like it's a, just a very interactive format. There's a ton of there's a ton of just cool cards that aren't available in other formats. There's a ton of decks. It has a lot of the same appeals that that modern does, but there's better and more interaction. I feel like in a in in Legacy. Legacy to me, it feels like it's a the format where I'm most likely to play a really interesting long fair game out of out of all the formats, really. Not going to venture to cast chart a course. Uh I'm 
confused. Charted course? Like, if we draw it? I see both sides. Some don't want to watch because they can't play. Some watch because they can't play. Yeah, I think that's... I mean, that's also true. I guess the same way that, like, watching someone open a ridiculously expensive box of Magic cards or whatever, Pokemon cards or Yu-Gi-Oh cards or whatever, is entertaining. Like, I guess it's kind of similar. Like, I I find myself clicking on that. Like, if someone opens a opens like an alpha starter or something i'll click on that video because i know i'm not gonna open an alpha starter but i do think it's interesting so maybe it's the same way with legacy where like i sure i can't afford it although i will say everyone can afford it on magic online like on magic online i really think anyone anyone can legacy is modern prices uh really huh Uh, after all that, they tutored up Witherbloom Command. Well, let's Venser it. Bounce it. I mean, we're just winning on beatdowns at the moment. Opponent passes. Go to combat. Attack ya. Land or <laughs> talisman go opponent. If they want to run it back, it's fine. Like at this point, we have enough mana. We can flash in this pester might and just try to win super fairly. Opponent. Sure. Oh, their reanimator deck. Okay, opponents reanimating. Opponent. Well, I kind of like them having to cast it again. I feel like we're sort of on the tempo plan at the moment. Mounted. All right, that does make things worse. Oh my goodness, Imperial Seal. Ay ay ay. Well, we could be dying next turn. What else would you be playing in Tomb for, though? I would be surprised. Pwn's got a lot of tutors. Pwn does seem to have a good deck. Yeah, all the tutors are very good in unfair decks. So I think we just run out Pestermite and hope that we live. Opponent goes attacking. Sure. Pestermite. Untap. Hit ya. Well, we'll see if we're dead. Opponent down to four. Play the land past the turn. Opponent tutored something. Bloodstained Mire. Cracks it to three. Is this our opponent winning the game? Gets a land. Inferno Titan. All right. Well, that does look like the opponent winning the game. Huh. Well, tutors are powerful. <laughs> very, very powerful. And I am... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, seven mana draw one, not gonna cut it. So our opponent is reanim. They're definitely reanimator. Those are those are the kind of cards you'd be playing in reanimator. We don't really have an answer to reanimator. Wow, we almost got there with the janky, the janky janky beatdown plan came so close. Is your green screen weird? Your background and your chair are vibrating. Well, I don't know. I don't know. 
Sometimes, sometimes green screens are are like that. I don't know if that counts as weird or if it's just green screeny. But I do see what I do see what you're saying. But I don't know if it's a uh, green screens are just so finicky. Unless you're like a movie studio, <laughs> it might be the green reflecting off the chair. Yeah, I, I think it's normal. Normal weird. There you go. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Maybe I need a different chair. Maybe the chair is too reflecty. Well, Reanimator, when you have a good deck, I think is one of the best archetypes in Cube. So definitely frightened. Our opponent has presumably faster ways to win than we do. Although, I will say, we're in the finals again. So... I don't know. Both of our decks kind of worked out today pretty well. All right, we'll play first. Well, we can loot. That's good. Looter L Core Conspiracy Theorist, kind of a combo. <laughs> very, very loosely. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, Triome Go. Opponent. it. Library of Alexandria. Pretty good on the draw. I'll play a land and talisman. Go. Opponent. Free card draw. Discard. Reanimate. Win. <laughs> Wait, so LSV really thinks that library is not good? That kind of blows my mind that anyone would think library is not good. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, with Imperial Recruiter coming to Modern, what do you think of Tempo Teamer Kiki combo deck? I mean, I think that... Well, there's the Imperial Seal. I think that... Um, I think that there's probably a good chance that Kiki combo gets better because of... Because of Imperial Recruiter. Like, it is super good for that. He thinks that library's good, just not first pick, and requires a particular deck for it to really be good. Uh, okay. That's that's a little different than not good. I don't even know if I agree with that, personally. But, that's still a lot different than not good. If your deck has Chromox, uh, library is S-tier, though. <laughs> Wait, isn't Chromox... Yeah, I mean, I guess it kind of works with library. Oh, opponents. <laughs> I'm pretty sure library would absolutely break modern. I think, I think modern would be incredibly busted if library was in it. I feel like in commander it would be interesting. I feel like library would be... I mean, obviously it can never work because the reserve list, which ruins all cool ideas. But let's say... Let's say Library Alexander could be reprinted until it was like $10 or something. Uh, I actually think it would be interesting to make it legal in commander. I feel like every single deck would play it or every single deck should play it. And it would help decks that are bad at drawing cards more. Like your mono white deck is going to benefit more than... A blue deck, because your white deck's really bad at drawing cards, but your blue deck already has lots of ways to draw cards. But obviously, obviously, you can't do uh, can't do that because, I mean, it's, I don't even know, $10,000 or something because of the reserve list. Some insanely silly, ridiculous, unrealistic prize. Ugh. The flood is on. Well, land and talisman and yeah, I guess we just pass your go. Library top ten best lands ever in Magic. What would be on what would be on that list? Probably the Urza Saga, like Talarian Academy, Sarah Sanctum lands. Uh, I think Library would be on there. I think. That would actually be kind of an interesting list to do. Oh, come on now. Oh. That would actually be kind of an interesting uh, interesting list to do at some point. I mean, you can see the power of library in this game. Like, 
Our opponent's getting to draw two cards a turn. We are not getting to draw two cards a turn. Drawing two cards a turn means our opponent's able to find Ren and Sixes and Firebolts and just clear our stuff. And now we're in a position where we're doing nothing and our opponent's doing everything. Like, I think this is... This is what I would consider a library winning this game. Just, like, straight up Library of Alexandria winning this game. Tabernacle would probably be on there. Wastelander Strip Mine. Maybe both would be on there. Workshop. Opponent has Una's Prowler. And... Are we reanimating something? I mean, opponent's got nine cards in hand after playing their card for their turn... Yeah, I mean, this is super over. I mean, good reanimator decks are really, really good, and library is insane. Academy, Cradle, Sanctum, Library, Bazaar. I mean, that doesn't seem like a a unrealistic list. Maybe, maybe Strip Mine should be number one, because it beats all the... <laughs> because it, it beats all the other broken lands. Opponent discards Inferno Titan. <laughs> yeah, this is just this is this is super over, super super over. Uh, strip mine, get rid of your library. We will metamorph a <laughs> towel is man, <laughs> boom, and uh. I'm sure this will take down two Planeswalkers. <laughs> Sanctum might not make... I think out of that cycle, it's definitely Tolarian Academy 1, Gaia's uh, Cradle 2, Sarah Sanctum 3. Whether or not Sanctum would also make the top five, I don't know. Opponent gets back Library. Ren and Six, pretty good magic card. Yeah, I mean, this this game's just so over. I mean, even if we hit Augury, I don't think it really matters. I guess we'll wait around in case we hit an Augury. Pfft. Demonic Tutor, sure. I guess we can draw one more one more card, but opponent Necromancy gets back Inverno Titan. Like, even if we hit Augury, doesn't Liliana and Inferno Titan just answer it? Opponent takes up Liliana. And go. Maze of Myth would probably be in consideration for top 10. Well, one draw. Sneak attack with no creatures. Well, opponent's deck pretty, uh, pretty good. Well, the good news is both of our decks performed pretty well. We did some, uh, <laughs> some pretty janky things. And we ended up going 2-0, 2-0, and then losing in the finals each time. The last game... No, eh, pretty pretty fine with that. The first the first draft, oh, I still think we could have won that if we just didn't run so clunky. But would Modern Jun be good with Library of Alexandria? It would be better, but then everyone else would be better too. So Dark Depths, I think, is in the conversation of a of a most played land. But who? Oh, on that note, everyone, I think that brings us to the end of our stream for today. But there is a there's good news. The good news is. We will be back on Thursday, and Thursday, Modern Horizons is going to be out, so probably uh, doing some Modern Horizons drafting, and then we'll play tons of Constructed going forward, so in the meantime, reminders, replay YouTube, that's when you can find the old streams, normal YouTube, there's gameplay going up tonight, there's against odds tomorrow, there's more spoiler videos, there's top 10 videos, there's a ton of stuff, Legacy on Friday for much of Rue, oh, the Legacy deck on Friday, Watch that one. We're 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 doing something uh, pretty <laughs> pretty spectacular. Commander precon cards coming to Legacy to do some busted things. So so keep an eye out for all that on the YouTube. One more reminder that our sponsor tonight is Card Kingdom. And if you need some magical cards, you can get them over at CardKingdom.com. So thank you to Card Kingdom for supporting the show. Most importantly, thank you to all of you. Y'all are amazing and awesome. And I love each and every one of you. Seriously, thank you so much, everyone, for being awesome, hanging out. Have a wonderful night. Have a great Wednesday. I'll be back on Thursday for more streaming. So until then, have a good one, and I will talk to you soon.